Traveling from Hunter, Author, Battle Ring, Chapter 51 Devil, Elementalization. Watching the seeds disappear in Fisher's hand, Crook's cheeks twitched wildly, his face full of displeasure, his eyes wished to give Fisher a big ear post from Zuazu. Let's talk about it after we go out, what do you want to take with you here? Noticing Crook's angry eyes, Fisher rolled her eyes and said, Hey, it seems to be true, boy. The method you used to get rid of the vitality tree's seeds just now is the no space nature. It's really good, Nitero said with a smile, and Crook also reacted at this time. That's right, even if I get the seed of the vitality tree now, I can't take it with me. After all, their group still has other important matters to deal with. However, even so, Crook still wants to fight for it. For a plant hunter, the allure of this extinct plant can be imagined. Hey, you geese stop chatting, there are monsters coming. Just when Crook was about to discuss with Fisher, Jin's voice who had been on guard all along, sounded. Crook immediately became vigilant, staring at Jin's position. At this time, a large number of monsters with fierce and ugly faces appeared in the position where Jin was guarding. There are two huge bone wings on the back of these monsters, holding weapons of different shapes in their hands, and rushing towards this side with a face full of ferocious fangs and claws. When viewed from a distance, it is densely packed, like a dark cloud. It is roughly estimated that there are hundreds of them. If that's all it is, it won't surprise Fisher. Fisher knew that they would have many enemies on this trip ever since he got the information about this secret realm from Crook. To Fisher's surprise, these monsters were all entangled with thoughts. In other words, these monsters are not Of course, this is not the most surprising thing for Fisher. What surprised Fisher most was the appearance of these monsters. Demon. Fisher opened his mouth slightly, dumbfounded. It has a ferocious face, red complexion, huge horns on its head and two huge bone wings behind it. That's right, it's a demon, and the monster flying towards them is the demon in Western mythology in Fisher's previous life. I didn't expect to see creatures like demons here. Speaking of this Fisher is like complaining about the Bible of the world. In the Bible of this world, there is the character of Judas, the legend of God, and the legend of heaven. But there is no hell corresponding to heaven. Satan and demons corresponding to God do not exist at all, and even angels are just chatting a few strokes, and no in-depth records. For this situation, Fisher is adhering to the reason that the world is different, so the religion is different to persuade himself not to be too horny. I didn't expect to meet a demon that doesn't exist in this world here. So there are creatures like angels? Looking at the approaching demon, Fisher thought with some evil taste. Are these guys again? I kill so many every year, but I can't kill them all. Seeing a large group of Nianchi gathering flying over, Nitero scratched his forehead with a troubled expression on his face. It's so similar to that monster, I guess it was created by that monster. Jin didn't have such a reaction. He was very calm, but he had already started to move his hands and feet. Hey, old man, are you in charge of the attack or am I in charge of the attack? Jin asked Nitero after a bit of maneuvering. Well, well, I think it's better to let Fisher do it. Fisher, what do you think? Nitero was slightly silent when he heard the words, then turned around, looked at Fisher, and said to Fisher. Me? Sure. Then leave these guys to me. Fisher was a little surprised, but still nodded. After finishing speaking, Fisher walked over and came to Jin's side. Attack as much as you want, and leave the defense to us. Nitero patted Fisher on the shoulder and said to Fisher, Don't be so troublesome, I'll kill them in an instant. Fisher flicked his wrist and said casually, He hasn't shot with all his strength after getting the thunder fruit, so he will try it today. Hey, it seems that you are quite confident. Don't be brave if you can't do it. Let the two of them do it. Crook also walked over at this time and reminded Fisher. Ho 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 ho, Crook, you really care about Fisher? Nitero blinked and joked with a disrespectful look. Am I worried about him? I'm worried about the seeds he put away. If something happens to this kid, then what if something goes wrong with the seeds of the vitality tree? Crook said with his hands on his hips, annoyed. Hey, what are you going to do? Jin didn't tease Crook, but stood beside Fisher and asked Fisher. Let them go a little further. Fisher didn't answer, but said so. Come in a little bit. I'm afraid it will disturb Gailu. Hearing this, Jin frowned, and said after looking at Gailu who was still sitting cross-legged and releasing Yuan. Then I'll change the battlefield. Fisher nodded and said upon hearing this. As soon as the voice fell, Fisher instantly turned into a bolt of lightning, and greeted the charging demons. That was just now. Looking at Fisher's back, Jin's eyes widened. Old man, you saw it just now, right? Jin hurriedly turned his head and shouted excitedly at Nitero. Ah, I see. That kid's body has changed just now. Nitero nodded with a dignified expression. What are you talking about? Crook, on the other hand, didn't notice the change in Fisher just now because he was paying attention to the safety of Gailu behind him, so he was a little confused. The kid just now turned into a lightning bolt. Jin explained. It turned into lightning. Crook was also shocked. There has never been a record of this since the appearance of N, that is, Known has managed to transform itself into these natural elements. R, it's a new river. Jin nodded his tone a little excited. He is witnessing history. The eyes of the three were fixed on the front. Witnessed by the three of them, a giant lightning cage descended from the sky, 
enclosing all the demons in it, and then endless thunder tore through the sky and covered it. Thousands of thunder and sky prisons. The electric mouse said that he is very familiar with it. Boom! Exclamation mark. With the sound of scolding, a deafening and shocking bang resounded through the sky, and a shock wave that could destroy everything swept over like mountains and seas. Seeing this scene, Jin and the others shrank their pupils immediately, and Nitero unfolded the hundred forms of Avalokitesvara without hesitation, and the huge statue of Avalokitesvara floated in midair. Chapter 52, Jin, who is bullied every day. Ha, huh, almost almost, I almost disturbed Gailu. Watching Nitero use Bshi Guanyin to block the shock wave, Jin wiped off the sweat that didn't exist, and said happily. It's already disturbing. Crook's eyes twitched, looking at Gailu who had opened his eyes, he sighed helplessly. Jin. Ah, looking back, she found that Gailu had really opened her eyes and stood up. This means that Gailu has retracted the circle. It's okay, I wasn't disturbed, I took the initiative to remove you on. Gailu shook her head and explained. However, little brother Fisher's strength is really terrifying. After explaining, Gailu looked at the area not far away that was shrouded in thunder, deeply moved. The place where Fisher was at this time had completely turned into the field of thunder, and the endless thunder and lightning were not only bombarding that area, but exuding destructive power. Ah. Indeed, it's a monster to have such power at this age. Mentioning Fisher, Jin also had to admire. Since records began, there had never been an like Fisher who possessed this level of strength at this age. They are already standing on the edge of the threshold of the top five n, and it is estimated that they will be able to rank among the top five n in one or two years. And Nitero also noticed Gailu, so he removed the hundred style Avalakites Vara and landed on the huge petals. Are you interrupted? Nitero asked as soon as he landed. No, I've identified the toxicity in this area and I can make an antidote now. Gailu shook her head in denial. Well, what materials are needed, let's find them now. Hearing this, Nitero nodded and continued to ask. Forget it, let Fisher go with me. This time, the poison is a bit strong. If you run around, it's not good. Fisher has a strong resistance to poison, so you can follow. Gailu shook her head and refused. Got Nitero's idea. The toxicity of this secret realm often changes, which is why she has to follow it every time. But this time the toxicity was a bit stronger. In Nitero's situation, it would be bad if they ran around. That's it, then I'll leave it to you guys. Hearing that, Nitero had no choice but to give up. Neither Jin nor Crook said anything. Soon, Fisher's battlefield was over, the dark clouds all over the sky quickly dissipated, and the thunder dissipated, revealing the situation inside. Fisher stood in midair calmly with lightning flashing all over his body. Hey, that kid, even Transmuter has cultivated to this level. Seeing this scene, Nitero was a little surprised. Only a transmuter has been cultivated to a certain level to be able to float in the air. Fisher's current scene means that his transmuter's thoughts have been cultivated to a very advanced level. It's really strange, this kid should be conjurer, how can even transmuter be able to cultivate to this level? Jin scratched his head, unable to accept it. A narrow-minded guy. Crook gave him a blank look. If you don't hate me, I'll die, Crook. It won't die, it will be boring. F King F K. Okay, you two stop arguing. Nitero looked at the two who suddenly quarreled again. A look of trouble. Gailu, on the other hand, was very interested in the scene in front of her, and watched with great interest, only to bring out peanut beer, cola popcorn and watermelon. As soon as Nitero finished speaking, Fisher's figure turned into a bolt of lightning and landed on the petals. Hey! The task is completed. Back on the petals. Fisher waved at several people and said relaxedly, You crossed a distance of more than 100 meters in an instant, boy, you are going against the sky. Nitero, who was trying to persuade him to fight, saw Fisher suddenly appearing. He was stunned, and almost pulled his stubble off. No, 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 I don't dare to go against the sky. That's the business of the protagonists. Hearing Nitero's praise, Fisher waved his hands repeatedly, saying that he didn't dare. Only the protagonists in the novel dare to do such a thing against the sky. Anyway. Fisher would not dare to be so bold. He also doesn't have that capital, even if he has a system. Fisher, I have identified the toxicity here, and I already have a plan for making an antidote. Now I need to pick some herbs, you can go with me. At this moment, Gailu came over and said to Fisher, Is it ready so soon? As expected of the twelve earthly branches of the Hunter Association. Hearing Gailu's words, Fisher was slightly surprised, and then praised without hesitation. Okay, stop talking nonsense, make the antidote as soon as possible and take it as soon as possible, otherwise the three of them will not be able to withstand the poison in the air for too long. Gailu rolled her eyes and said, and then jumped off the petals go out. There's poison in the air, why don't I feel it? Fisher blinked, looked at the three of Nitero and asked, do you think everyone is like you Zoldyak, you have been trained in anti-drug since childhood? Hearing Fisher's words, Nitero couldn't help being a little upset. Fisher's words were somewhat suspicious of Vesai. Eh? What is Vesai? Is that so? Hearing this, Fisher raised his eyebrows, then jumped out of the petals with a smile, 
and followed Gay Ilu's figure. Hey, old man, Fisher is from the Zoldyk family, aren't you afraid that when he grows up, he will have an impact on the human kingdom? Jin said to Nitero, watching the backs of Fisher and Gailu leaving. Well, you have also seen this kid's temperament, right? It is not harmful to this society, but has great benefits. Nitero said with a smile, stroking his stubble. Hey, Uncle Sloppy, I heard you. At this moment, the voice of Fisher who hadn't gone far came from below. Who is the sloppy uncle? Hash, isn't it you? You don't have any self-knowledge in this outfit. Crook curled his lips and said bitterly. Crook, have you fallen in love with that kid? Jin heard the words. His face was covered with black lines. I think Crook wants to curry favor with that kid Fisher. Fortunately, when he goes out to discuss the seed of the vitality tree with Fisher, Fisher can see that he can lower the conditions for the sake of speaking for Fisher. Nitero saw clearly, it directly pointed out Crook's purpose. Gold, you are amazing. You are lofty, you hate me to please this kid. Chapter 53, Secret Realm Situation, Transactions. Gay Ilu, is the poison in this secret realm so strong that even Nitero and Jin can't resist it? Fisher followed behind Gay Ilu, watching Gay Ilu picking all kinds of strange shaped flowers and plants, and asked with some doubts. Well, very strong. Speaking of which, it's a blessing that Chairman Nitero was able to find you. The toxicity of this place has increased dramatically every year for several years. In a few years, it is estimated that President Nitero and Crook will not be able to get in, and only the monster Jin and I will be able to get in. Jin can suppress poison with powerful thoughts, but I am proficient in poison science, so I can suppress it. Of course, now there is one more you. Even if there is no Nitero in terms of combat power, you can share the burden once a year. But when it comes to plants, no one else can take on the crowd except Crook. It's just that sealing is not a long-term solution after all. That's why we are eager to find a Thunderbolt and Master. Only by solving the matter from the root cause will this place be completely safe and will not affect the outside world. With you here this time, the danger of this secret realm must be solved from the root. Gailu explained while picking flowers and plants. Is that so? Fisher nodded slightly upon hearing this. From this point of view, if there is no self in this world, then the one who will appear here in the future should be Kilua. Raiden Master Nitero and others have been searching for several years but have not found it, so they met themselves. And in the world of Hunter x Hunter without his own, Kilua is the only Thunden who can grow rapidly in the past few years. This burden will also be handed over to him. Fisher didn't believe King would leave the place alone. Without him, when Kilua grows up, Jin will definitely find Kilua to come here. Of course, it is also possible that Jin is deliberately attacked by Kilua, trying to get Raiden and come in by himself. Then. Do you know why that immortal monster needs a Thunderbolt and Master to destroy it? Fisher was silent for a moment, and then continued to ask. This is what Jin said. He said that it is necessary for the Thunder and Lightning to attract the power left behind by the master of the posthumous mind that created this secret realm. When Jin came here, although he encountered that monster and was abused and was very embarrassed, he also found a way to restrain this monster, and he pulled the posthumous mind of this secret realm to seal that monster. However, to kill that monster requires a stronger afterlife. That is the original power of the master who reads after death. Gay Ilu continued to answer. According to Jin, the power is of the lightning attribute, which is very terrifying. It needs the same lightning type and person to be able to pull it out. As long as that power can be pulled out, then that immortal monster can be killed. How did Jin know? Fisher was a little puzzled. The posthumous owner of this place left to steal before his death, which recorded a text that is rarely recognized in the human kingdom. But this guy Jin is relic hunter, and he likes to involve these things the most. He has an understanding of various languages and characters, and can understand the characters on the stone tablet. It's also because of understanding the words on the stone tablet that Jin was able to induce the afterlife to seal the immortal monster. Gailu replied, Okay, we've gathered all the herbs we need, let's go back. Gailu plucked the last brightly colored flower and said to Fisher. Fisher nodded thoughtfully. The two hurried back in the direction they came from. Hey, Gailu, you are poison hunter, so can I hire you? On the way back. Fisher communicated with Gailu. As for why Fisher wanted to hire Gailu, it was naturally because he wanted to obtain some unknown poisons from Gailu, and then use them himself to enhance the body's poison immunity. Although the people of the Zoldyk family claim to be immune to poisons, they are not truly invulnerable to all poisons. Instead, they allow themselves to constantly adapt to these poisons, thus producing antibodies. And because of the toxic antibodies in the body, the body is immune to all kinds of poisons. Once there are poisons that are too toxic, far exceeding their own toxic antibodies, then Fisher cannot be immune to these poisons at will. Fisher had already used all the poisons in the Zoldyk family. If you want to continue to enhance your own toxicity immunity, you have to continue to take poison. And Gailu, as the poison hunter, is obviously the best partner. Of course, Fisher isn't entirely convinced that Galileo is. At that time, if the poison is really obtained from Gailu's hands, People in the family will definitely conduct various tests before taking it, and will not use it until it is confirmed that there will be no mistakes. 
In order for the Zoldyck family to have a strong immunity to poisons, they naturally trained such talents. However, the poison of the Zoldyck family has reached a bottleneck, so it is necessary to obtain new poisons from outside professionals. The poison in this guy's hands is not available to the Zoldyck family, and to be able to deal with the toxicity of this secret realm, Gailu obviously has a strong talent in poisons, and he should have a lot of poisons in his hands that the Zoldyck family does not have. Aren't you afraid that I will poison you with a poison that surpasses your toxic antibody? Gailu replied flatly, and did not agree. He he, the team of the Zoldyck family is not vegetarian. Fisher also replied lightly. Okay, as for the employment, let's forget it. I have poisons that are not available in the market. Each one billion renunciation, if you want it, we will trade it after we go out. Make a deal. In the future, if you formulate other powerful poisons, you can find me first, and I will give you a good price. Hey. It seems that I have found a partner who doesn't do it. Each each other. 54th guess. Hey, you're back, so fast. Fisher and Gailu returned to the petals, and Jin came over casually and waved hello. Well, the antidote for this poison is nearby, so you don't have to go too far. Gailu nodded and explained. Afterwards, Gailu didn't say anything more, and with a wave of his hand, a giant python emerged from his hand, swallowing him from the beginning to the end, which startled Fisher. Don't worry. This is Gailu's ability, the pharmacy room, where Gailu makes antidote and poison. Crook walked over with arms folded and explained to Fisher. N is so strange. Fisher nodded, and then sighed. Well, it is indeed. Crook heard this, but did not refute. After all, Hern was also very weird, because she likes to study plants. Hern is also related to plants, and compared with Gailu's N, it might as well be more strange. Fisher, did anything happen when you searched for the antidote materials? Nitaro also came over at this time and asked Fisher. No. No. At first, I was worried about monster attacks, but Gail and I went all the way in a rare calm, without any disturbance. Fisher shook his head and said truthfully. To be honest, he was also surprised by this. This is troublesome. When I came here in the past, when I was collecting antidote materials, there were always obstacles. Just blocking is enough. This time, no monster was sent here. If something goes wrong, there must be a monster. Hearing this, Jin frowned and his expression was very bad. Indeed, in the past when he collected antidote materials, that monster sent many monsters to harass it. Why didn't it happen this time? Nitaro also looked serious at this time. Could it be that Fisher's extermination of the monster was too loud before, so he scared the monster? Crook hesitated for a moment, then said. Do you think it's possible? Every time the old man came to clean up those little guys, he was not very powerful. Even if it couldn't be compared with the scene of Fisher just now, it would not be much weaker. Nitaro said with a slight displeasure as he glanced at Crook. The momentum created by co-authoring his own hundred style of Alakite Zvara is not as good as Fisher's just now. Creating those monsters will consume power. The undead monster didn't send his men this time. Is it accumulating strength? Jin Sisuo asked. It's possible. Nitaro nodded affirmatively. To accumulate power, could it be that the monster is not going to stop us, but is going to gather all the power and break the seal? Did the power of that monster gather so quickly this time? Jin's face also became serious. It seems that the speed must be faster. Crook, I'll leave it to you later. You can't take your time like usual. I know. Crook heard the words, and agreed with a solemn expression. As for Fisher, he was standing aside listening to the conversation between the three with a dazed look on his face. Although I heard Crook mention some things about the secret realm on the spaceship before, and I also heard about it when I was looking for antidote materials with Gale just now. But Fisher still doesn't have a grasp of the situation here, and I don't know the current situation, so I didn't interrupt and just listen to the conversation between a few people. However, Fisher figured out one thing. That is, the current situation is different from that of Nitaro and others, and it is a bit dangerous. Fisher, I will trouble you later. If things go well, then the crisis in this secret realm can be resolved once and for all. At this time, Jin walked to Fisher's side, put his arm on Fisher's shoulder, and said with a carefree look. Although he looked foolish. Fisher could hear that he took this matter very seriously, and his tone was very serious. Call me brother, call me brother and I will do my best. Ha, huh? damn, you boy, I shouldn't hold back, see if I don't deal with you. Crackling, exclamation mark. Damn, you kid, you don't talk about martial arts. Without any warning, Fisher gave him another paralysis physiotherapy, and Jin shivered with electric arcs all over his body, stammering and shouting. Fisher rolled his eyes lightly. Who told you to put your hand on me? Don't you know that I am now a thunder fruit capable person? The thunder and lightning on his body is the thunder of nature, but it is not that he generated electricity by himself before. As soon as the thought is moved, the thunder and lightning can be released directly, without the transformation of thought energy at all. Oh, you don't know, that's all right. Okay, you two should stop fighting, rest at ease, and wait for the antidote. As soon as the antidote is finished, take it immediately and rush to the place where the undead monster is. Nitero interceded. HMPH. Jin snorted unhappily and then his thoughts surged, dissipating the lightning from his body. However, at this moment, 
Jin was secretly startled. He was shocked by Fisher once before, so when he hugged Fisher's shoulders this time, Jin was already prepared, and his body's mind defense had been added several layers. Although he wasn't turned black like charcoal by Fisher as last time, he was still numb from the electric shock from Fisher. If this situation is in a battle, it will definitely be very passive. In a fight between masters, as long as a flaw, a moment is enough to determine the outcome or even life and death. If Fisher had attacked him just now, he would have been seriously injured if not dead. This kid is really a monster. Jin murmured inwardly, glancing at Fisher secretly. Soon, the antidote to the toxicity of this secret realm was completed. Gailu removed and appeared in front of everyone, holding five doses of medicine in his hand. Okay, you guys choose first. Holding the potion, Gailu said to Fisher and others. The three of Jin took a bottle without hesitation, Fisher followed suit, and then Gailu drank the last bottle in one gulp, and Nitero and the others followed suit. Is this necessary? Fisher looked at the reactions of the three of Nitero, and couldn't help being a little speechless. If Gailu really wanted to play tricks on these medicines, you layman would never know. Gailu asked for this. Jin shrugged, threw away the empty medicine tube in his hand, and said, Ah, that's it, Fisher, drink it quickly, and act quickly after drinking it. Gailu nodded and said, Hearing this, Fisher was a little surprised and didn't say much, just drank the potion in his hand. Okay, let's get started. Chapter 55 Plant Hunter Crook's Targeting Ability Ah, uh, is this a plant hunter? Looking at Crook who was walking ahead, constantly destroying all kinds of strange plants, the corners of Fisher's A's twitched slightly. Ha ha, I didn't expect that. As a plant hunter, Crook is naturally good at dealing with plants. Seeing Fisher's reaction, Nitero patted Fisher's shoulder and laughed. There are too many plants, and their strength is still very strong. It would be a waste of time for us to deal with them, so we will leave them to Crook. Crookson is good at dealing with these weird plants. Jin also explained. It's really dazzling. Gailu, on the other hand, was covering her eyes with one hand at this time, squinting her eyes slightly. In front of Fisher and the others, Crook was like a little sun, emitting a very dazzling light. This kind of light is not like a light, but like the light from the sun, which is very hot. The plants exposed to these rays of light quickly withered. In Crook's hands, these weird plants had no chance to show off their might and were all destroyed. It is more effective than the flame, and the burning process is emitted directly. It does remind Fisher of Fiaton from Phantom Brigade. This guy's big move is to create a small sun, using the temperature of the small sun to burn the enemy. Crook's ability is slightly inferior to Fiaton's. Of course, Fisher is not sure if this is Crook's full effort. However, Fisher felt that the strength of Crook, the twelve earthly branches of the Hunter Association, should not be inferior to that of Fiaton. It's just that there is no need to release that kind of power in this situation because it is a waste of thought. Thinking of Crook's title in the Hunter Society, a word came to Fisher's mind. The Golden Rooster announced the dawn. No, 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 only the rooster crows. Crook is female. Ah, uh, no, female. No, no, Crook's ability is very different from Fiaton's ability. This kind of light is not the kind of light of flames, but it is very similar to sunlight, with some peculiar properties. Otherwise it is just that this kind of temperature would not be able to destroy these strange shaped plants so easily. Although will Crook's abilities were compared with Fiaton's, but Fisher quickly overturned this guess. The area they passed was very weird, full of weird plants that would attack them, and their vitality was very strong. If you want to rely on temperature to deal with these plants, the temperature must be at least hundreds of degrees Celsius. The light released by Crook didn't even have a hundred degrees, but it easily destroyed these plants. In this case, the only explanation is that it is caused by the rays of light released by Crook, and these rays of light have certain special properties, which cause this result. Along the way, Fisher and the others followed Crook, the human-shaped little sun, and easily passed through this strange plant area. It's so bizarre. Is there a vast grassland behind the huge forest? Fisher said lightly, looking at the flat, endless grassland in front of him. No, it's not, this is not a grassland. Jin shook his head and denied lightly. The next moment, Jin's body erupted with a powerful aura, and after leaving a word, he walked forward. Come on, Fisher, from now on is there real danger? Do your best to maintain the strongest defensive aura. Nitero turned his head and reminded Fisher with a solemn expression. Before the words were finished, Crook and Gale beside Fisher also erupted with powerful auras and locked themselves in electric shocks, and then followed Jin and walked forward. Seeing this, Fisher didn't say much, and directly entered the state of lightning, his whole body flickering with lightning. Truth be told, Fisher could have done without. Because Fisher is now a thunder fruit capable user, he can elementalize at any time. However, Seeing the serious and cautious appearance of Nitero and others, Fisher thinks it is better to be like them, and be careful to sail for 10,000 years. After all, it is a place where the five big ninjas of the two worlds are afraid, so it is better for me to be more careful. What if elementalization doesn't work? Seeing this, Nitero nodded in satisfaction, 
and then a powerful aura erupted from his whole body. This place is very weird. Once you don't use your full strength to explode your thoughts, you will easily be attacked and controlled by some kind of spiritual power. When we first came, Crook and Gale were attacked and turned against us. Zero. If it weren't for me, Jin, and Porter White, who are so powerful, if I suppressed them and expelled that force, they would have become the puppets of that monster. Nitero walked forward, explaining to Fisher behind him think about the reason why you want to erupt. Hey, it's really interesting, even Crook and Gale were both recruited. Hearing this, Fisher immediately became interested. You know, to practice n, you must first cultivate your spirit, because only with a strong spirit can you control n as you like. Something like Circle consumes a lot of mental energy. Unexpectedly, masters like Crook and Gailu were all recruited. Hearing Fisher's words, Crook and Gailu, who were walking in front, looked a little unnatural. After all, this fact is too embarrassing. The two of them are first class hunters in the outside world, but they have stumbled here, and their faces are shameless. Crook turned around and gave Fisher a hard look. Seeing this, Fisher blinked, looking like something was wrong, which made Crook's teeth itch in anger. This kid, pretending to be confused while pretending to understand, right? Although he was a little resentful at Fisher's words, Crook didn't overreact. At most, he just gave Fisher a look and then turned his head away. You seem to like to piss off Crook. Nitero turned his head and winked at Fisher, looking like an old urchin. No, I didn't do anything. Fisher still blinked, acting like I don't know what you're talking about. This made Nitero even happier. This guy should know Crook's character. He is very proud, but this kid's inadvertent words and actions can make Crook forget this arrogance directly and get mad about it. Crook seemed to be restrained by Fisher. Here we are. At this moment, Jin in front spoke. I saw that after he finished speaking, he took a step again and then his whole body disappeared again like entering the secret realm before, apparently entering a different space. This surprised Fisher. There is no hole in the mystery of feelings. Afterwards, several people also walked in one after another. And after entering the space in this secret realm, Fisher finally realized why he had to burst out. Dot. Chapter 56, Breath of the Same Origin, Power of Freezing Space, The Dark Sky, The Magma Flowing All Over the Scarlet Ground, and The Unpleasant Smell Everywhere, This Place Is Like Hell. Other than that, what caught Fisher the most was some kind of special force in the air. After Fisher came in, this kind of power crazily drilled into Fisher's body. If it weren't for the powerful thoughts wrapped around Fisher's body surface, these powers would probably have gone into Fisher's body. This is probably the kind of power that Nitero said can control others as puppets. However, why do you feel that this power is a bit weird? Is it my illusion? I feel the breath of thunder in this force. No, no, there is indeed the aura of thunder and these two are from the same source. Feeling the invisible special force everywhere around him that wanted to attack him, Fisher's face remained unchanged, but he became a little vigilant in his heart. Jin said before that the master of the posthumous secret realm retains a powerful force to deal with the monsters sealed here by 190. And this power is thunder, so it needs a strong enough power of the same system to activate it. Special. The power that can control people's hearts has the breath of thunder, and it is of the same origin. I wish I was overthinking it. Fisher felt a little uneasy in his heart always feeling that the situation here was not what Jin and others said. Fisher, don't just stand there in a daze, hurry up and follow. And walking ahead, Kruk, who noticed that Fisher didn't follow up, but was in a daze, couldn't help but reminded. Here we come. Fisher shook his head, briefly suppressed the anxiety in his heart, and responded aloud, and then followed him in a flash. What happened to you just now? Kruk asked after following up. No, it's nothing. I'm just interested in the power here. Fisher shook his head but didn't express his inner worries. Be careful, don't relax. Once you're attacked by this force, then our previous efforts will be wasted this time. Hearing this, Crook's expression became serious. Crook is right, Fisher. Be careful. Nitero also reminded. I know that. Fisher nodded, indicating that he knew. As soon as the words fell, Fisher's expression changed, because he found that his surroundings turned into black and white in an instant, and Crook, Nitero and others stopped in place at this moment as if time had stopped. Divided in general, sad little guy. Before Fisher could respond, a gentle voice suddenly entered Fisher's ears. Who? Fisher shrank his pupils and shouted loudly. However, this voice did not respond. Moreover, the next moment, this black and white space disappeared, and everything returned to its original state. Neat Tero and the others were still walking, as if they hadn't noticed the changes just now. This made Fisher even more worried. Fisher became more and more certain that there was something odd about this place. Fisher is very clear about his mental power, which can be seen from his level 5 magic. After all, magic power is extracted by using spiritual power combined with external power. Reaching the of.5 level, and each level is a limit upgrade, one can imagine how high Fisher's spiritual power is. But just like this Fisher, he was pulled into that black and white space without noticing it at all just now, where it seems to be the crack of time. What exists here is beyond his imagination, 
beyond his expectations, and, why did that voice say that just now, I'm pathetic, why, at this moment, Fisher regretted agreeing to need Tero to come here, is it possible for me and others to deal with the existence that I can easily pull myself into that space without being aware of it, and the existence that neither I nor Nitero and Jin, the two great masters, can feel? Pull it down, if someone really wants to deal with you, just as before, just wipe your neck without you even noticing it. What's the matter with you? Crook noticed the change in Fisher's expression again, and couldn't help asking with a strange expression. I found out that I came here by mistake this time. Old man Nitero, I was tricked to death by you. Fisher didn't answer Crook after hearing this, but said to Nitero with resentment on his face. Huh? Nitero was stunned when he heard that. What happened? Jin, after hearing Fisher's words was keenly aware of something and asked quickly, just now I was pulled into a space where time stopped by some existence, Fisher didn't hide anything, he told the truth, even the voice didn't hide it, after listening to Fisher's words, everyone's pupils constricted and their faces showed shock, without him, what Fisher said was simply too appalling, can a Fisher's level be pulled into that space at will, and they don't realize it at all, is this power they can resist, especially Nitero, you know, his hundred styles of Avalakite Zvaro involves the field of time, but just now he didn't notice it at all, go back, crew said after a long silence, hearing this, everyone looked at each other, and then Jin smiled wryly and said, it's already too late, this level of existence has been lurking for so long, but it appeared this time, what do you think will happen, that's because he waited until the person he wanted showed up, and that person was Fisher, since he dared to show up, he is absolutely sure to keep us here, hearing this, Crook was suddenly taken aback, that's right, why didn't the owner of that voice show up when Potter came here a few times before, but this time when Fisher came, the owner appeared directly. Is it a coincidence? No matter how you think about it, it is impossible. Is it Fisher's lightning? Crook squinted his eyes and said the answer. Yes. The existence here is waiting for the arrival of the powerful Thundon to the previous seals and the like should just be waiting for us to bring the powerful Thundon to over. However, think about it. No matter what we do, the existence that cannot be killed will be easily sealed by us, and it will continue for several years. The inscription I saw was deceitful. Jin nodded his face still bitter, that's why I said I was tricked by you, Fisher nodded and said, but his expression didn't change at all, very calm, Jin is talking about the sealed monster, but is that really the case, although he said that, but after he finished speaking, Fisher couldn't help but wondered in his heart about 5.0, Fisher always felt that things should not be so simple, I'm sorry, Fisher, for involving you, Jin Mayan apologized apologetically, well, no matter what you say, the matter has reached this point, and we have no chance to avoid it, only by confronting head on can we have a chance of gaining a chance, everyone, we will go all out, Nitero shook his head slightly, and then he said to Fisher and others with a serious expression, ah, since this is the case, then even if it is death, I will tear off one arm of that monster, Crook replied with a face full of displeasure, although Jin and Gailu didn't say anything, their faces were serious, looking at the serious looking people, Fisher opened his mouth, wanting to say something, Fisher, what are you thinking, um, actually, we can go out, everyone, chapter 57 danger and opportunity coexist, although he was cheated by Nitero, Fisher didn't panic at all, because he can also feel the magical imprint he has left on the Zoldic family, the imprint of space magic flickering, that is to say, as long as Fisher wants, Fisher can leave here with magic at any time, moreover, in addition to the Zoldic family, Fisher also left a large number of imprints in places nearer here, as long as there is a life or death crisis, Fisher will leave this place instantly, he was even able to leave here with Jin and the others, that's why Fisher came here after hearing that there were monsters that neither Nitero nor Jin could handle, for Fisher, he came here to learn more, and it would be a good thing if the thunder on his body could play a role in destroying immortal monsters, otherwise there would be no loss, nothing to do, just go, Fisher, what did you say about 09, looking at Fisher, everyone was astonished and couldn't believe it, I have another space system, which can teleport people from here, Fisher said with a faint smile, really, that's great, let's go out and find a way, Jin Wenyan was surprised and said hastily, now, Jin also feels that things have gone beyond the controllable range, and the plan must be reformulated, I didn't expect you to practice none of the space system, it's really a big surprise for me, Nitero was also very surprised, and said with a smile, well, I'll send you out now, Fisher nodded, glanced at several people, and said, although it feels dangerous here, Fisher doesn't want to just go out, although it is dangerous here, Fisher can vaguely feel that there is his own opportunity here, once you get this opportunity, your strength will increase again, so Fisher didn't want to give up, wait, Fisher, what you just said means that you want to stay here, but Nitero and Jin Keeney heard Fisher's hidden meaning from Fisher's words, can't help but be surprised, yeah, Fisher didn't either, and told the truth, aren't you joking, after receiving an affirmative answer, Jin raised his voice slightly, his expression was astonished, as if he didn't dare to think that Fisher really planned to do so, well, I have my own ideas, Fisher still nodded, okay, come here, 
Contact me. I will use space transfer to teleport you out. Afterwards, Fisher urged. Crook and Gailu looked at each other upon hearing this, and then both walked over and put their hands on Fisher's shoulder. But Nitero and Jin were silent at this time. Seeing this, Fisher was slightly puzzled. What's wrong with you? You still haven't come here. No, Fisher, you can just send Crook and Gailu away, and the old man and Jin stay here to help you. You must have your purpose for staying here. The old man and Jin are not bad, and they can help you. Nitero shook his head and refused. Ah, as the old man said, I will stay with him to help you. I was the one who involved you this time, and I feel sorry for keeping you here. Jin also nodded. It's up to you. Hearing this, Fisher raised his eyebrows slightly, raised the corners of his mouth, and said with a light smile. The next moment, Fisher performed the magic, flickering, teleporting Crook and Gailu. As for the teleportation place, it is naturally on the airship of the Hunter Association. The two only felt a flash in front of their eyes, and then the surrounding environment changed arbitrarily. It really came out, it's incredible. Crook looked at the familiar surroundings and said in surprise. It's such a terrifying ability to teleport us all at once from such a long distance. Gailu was also terrified. Anyway, let's inform the international high level first, and let them clear the nearby cities, otherwise we will be in trouble if something happens. After regaining his senses, Crook said hastily. Ah, let's do this. On the other side. In the secret realm. After sending Crook and Gale out, Fisher set off again with Kim and Nitero. Fisher, what is your purpose of staying here? You know, the monster here probably exposed itself this time because of your thunder and lightning. You are very dangerous here. Walking on the road, Jin asked Fisher puzzled. Wealth is in danger, although I am in danger here, but I can feel that besides the danger, I can also obtain great benefits here. It depends on whether I can seize this opportunity. Fisher shook his head, not hiding anything and said truthfully, it would be better to make this matter clear, then Jin and Nitera can also play by ear, and may be able to help at critical moments. If the two of them don't know the purpose of staying here, they will probably be confused at the critical moment of 160, and they don't know how to help. I see, is that so? If that's the case, it's quite normal for you to stay here. Nitero suddenly realized, and nodded in agreement. If it were me, and there was such a situation where danger and opportunity coexist, I would choose to take a risk. If you win, you can turn your bicycle into a motorcycle, and if you lose, you can sleep on the sky bridge. Ah, why do these weird words keep popping up in my mind? But quite image, Fisher. Do you know what your opportunity is? Kim said again as Nitera groaned. I have a clue, but this clue makes my scalp tingle. Fisher replied with a frown. Is the scalp numb? Let's talk about it in detail. Let us understand. After entering here, I felt the breath of thunder in the power that can confuse people's hearts. That power has the same source as the breath of thunder. Do you know what this means? Fisher said meaningfully. As soon as these words came out, Jin and Nitero's pupils constricted immediately, their hearts beat a beat slower, and the horror in their pupils did not hide at all. Dot. Chapter 58 Enemy. The Admirable Nitero. The breath has the same source, which means that the master of the after-death is also the enemy. Jin said before that the main power of the master of the afterlife is thunder, so it needs thunder and lightning to activate the power left behind. But now Fisher told them that the power that had bewitched Crook and Gale before carried the aura of thunder. In other words, when the five of them came in for the first time, what they did to them was posthumous reading. And now they are in the secret realm formed by after death. It's very scary when you think about it. Just thinking about it after death can form such a huge secret realm that has survived for so long, and how powerful it must have been during life. At least the five and people in the human kingdom. The two of them are simply incomparable. Originally, just dealing with an immortal monster made them lose confidence. But now there is such a potential enemy, this. For a while, both Nitero and Jin were silent. The two of them stayed, and besides wanting to help Fisher, they naturally had other plans. That is to be lucky, to see if with Fisher's thunder, they can kill the immortal monster. Unexpectedly, this kind of thing happened now. Two powerful enemies, one is difficult to deal with, now there is another one, and they relied on to eliminate the existence of the first enemy, and now they have become enemies. Two kings fried. If these two king bombs appear in a human society, it will cause unimaginable consequences. It's really troublesome. This old man still encounters this kind of thing. With a sad face, Nitera grabbed his bald forehead vigorously. That can't be helped. I can only take a step and watch. The boat will naturally go straight when it reaches the bridge. Jin also sighed, feeling very helpless. Then what if the boat is not straight? Fisher leaned over and said, Hash. If it's not straight, I'll straighten it. Kim said angrily and Fisher is still saying such sarcastic remarks at this time. Ha ha, seeing Jin like this, Shelton laughed. It's okay, it's really not good. Just let the high-level human beings plant a few rose bombs here. Even if they can't be killed, they should be able to seriously injure them. Fisher patted Jin's shoulder comfortingly. For the enemies in this secret realm, Fisher gave a stronger evaluation than the Ant King who will be born in the future. This is a secret realm, a space different from the outside world. How can rose bombs get in? Hearing this, Jin frowned, 
he was not interested in such things as poor people's roses, it was too inhuman, that can't be helped, let the old man come over then, Nitero said suddenly, Fisher, listening to Nitero's words, Fisher was very emotional, Cher really admires this old urchin, in the original book, in order to eliminate Maruim, the king of ants, he did his best and even took his life, this time, the old urchin's mind remained unchanged, for the sake of human beings, there will be devastating disasters and sacrifice their own lives, this kind of noble, self-sacrificing personality thought, Fisher can't do it, if it's for his family, Fisher can do it, but for the whole world, Fisher thinks it over, of course, Fisher doesn't mind making a move if he has the ability, but Fisher is not sensitive to fighting with his life, human nature is the most complicated thing, if you sacrifice your life for them, they may not appreciate it, maybe some brain dead ones may even recite it in turn, by the way, Jin, I remember that you seem to be able to imitate the power of eight or nine layers of the striking ability you have come into contact with, have you imitated my lightning, wait, if there is a real battle, with my Raiden, you should be able to play a greater role, after feeling Nitero's noble personality and the complexity of human nature, Fisher suddenly thought of something and asked Jin Road, as soon as these words came out, Jin's face suddenly became strange, how do you know my abilities, I never revealed this secret, don't pay attention to the details, just say you have mastered it, Fisher waved his hand casually, and didn't intend to explain, how to explain, can I tell you that I have read comics about you, nonsense, speaking of this, you kid is really weird, none of other blows, I can imitate the power of eight or nine floors as long as I receive a blow, but I can't imitate your boy's lightning, mm, same as the old man, Jin's complexion became even weirder, and he began to look at Fisher, he had purposely hooked up with Fisher before, and it wasn't really for nothing that Sil had a second paralysis session, it's because I don't believe in evil, and after being shocked by Fisher for the first time, I didn't imitate it, so I want to try again. In the end, he only received an electric shock, and did not imitate it at all. The nature of Fisher's lightning is naturally different from that of ordinary, making it impossible for him to do anything. If he could imitate it, he wouldn't need Fisher to follow him. With his Nian Chi cultivation base, even imitating 80% of his power should be enough. That's right. Fisher was slightly surprised when he heard this. Then it became clear. If it was before he got the Thunderbolt fruit, Jin, who got it well, might be able to master it with his incredible talent, but I have already obtained the thunderous fruit, and the thunder and lightning in my body have undergone a sharp change, already different from normal and Jin cannot imitate and here we are, at this moment, Nitero, who hadn't spoken since just now, spoke, this is a huge volcano, the crater spouts magma from time to time, flowing down the mountain, the reason why the terrain of this space is like this is caused by this volcano, next, everyone has to be vigilant, this is the final place, Nitero did not look back, watching the volcano constantly erupting on the top of the mountain, and reminded dignifiedly, but Fisher, at this time, did not listen to Nitero's reminder at all, and stared at the place halfway up the mountain, the breath of thunder comes from there. Dot. Chapter 59 Mutation God System The breath of thunder you feel is coming from there, that place is exactly where the Steli mentioned is. Noticing Fisher's gaze, Jin also looked over and said with a complicated expression. He is now completely calculated by this stone tablet, he has always been the only one who schemes against others, and this is the first time he has been schemed against by others, fighting geese all day long and being becked by geese today, one can imagine the depression in Jin's heart, it's really strange, let's not talk about the unexpected calmness along the way, we're all here, but there's still no change, Nitero didn't follow along, but still looked at the volcano in front of him with a suspicious look on his face, indeed, when we arrived here in the past, that monster had already erupted, Jin also withdrew his gaze and temporarily focused his attention on the top of the volcano, that's where they seal the immortal monster, however, even if he turned his eyes away, Jin still had a strong sense of vigilance there, the circle on his body had already been released to the maximum, and he was afraid that an enemy would suddenly appear, although this will consume a lot of thought energy, there is no way, we will let the enemy be dark and we will be clear, don't be vigilant, if you are not careful, you and others may play go go, Gamiova, at 060, you guys, you really don't hide anything, Fisher raised his eyebrows as he watched Jin, who had spread the range of his circle to a distance of 500 meters in an instant, this guy released such a big circle without making a sound, moreover, this circle is still spreading, and it is spread to a position of 1000 meters when Fisher speaks, Fisher's gaze was unmistakable, thinking about my grandfather who has cultivated the circle for so many years, he has only cultivated the circle to a range of 300 meters, even so, it is already rare among, but today, Fisher met too, Gailu and Jin, the circles of both of them far surpassed Grandpa Gino, and also surpassed him, the Madoku of the two is probably comparable to the Madoku of Neferpatu, the Ant King's personal guard, but thinking about it is acceptable, after all, Jin is one of the five ninjas, and it is not unacceptable to be able to do this kind of thing, as for the Ant King, forget it, after this guy was reborn, he was able to cover the entire East Godot with a single thought, 
before rebirth, it is estimated that there is not much difference, and human beings cannot compare at all. Let's go, let's go up, after Jin released the circle, Nitero spoke again with a dignified expression. Hey, hey, it's really troublesome. I hate head-to-head -head encounters the most. Jin scratched his scalp and said troublesomely. He prefers to collect intelligence behind the scenes, and then according to the intelligence, analyze the enemy's character, and formulate various plans to deal with the enemy. But this time it is impossible to do so, the only option is head to head, who let the enemy be in the dark this time, and he was calculated, and he didn't get any information, instead, he and others fell into the trap of others, the secret realm formed by the post death thoughts, if the post death thoughts are really as they guessed and have consciousness, then they can monitor the entire secret realm, this means that their every move after entering is monitored, how can they formulate plan, I and others probably just discussed it, and the people monitoring them have already noticed it. This is why they never thought about discussing or making plans along the way. The only way is to release the circle and be on guard at all times. Moreover, what worries Jin the most is that Fisher has just used the space ability to teleport Crook and Gale, and this ability has been exposed. So will the post-mortem target them, making Shell's teleportation unable to work again? If this is the case, then they really have no way out. Jin did not ask this point. However, even if, Ajka, is really like this, he will not complain. This is his and Nitero's own choice. After all, this is my fault. Let me leave it alone. I really can't do it. Jin sighed silently in his heart. This secret realm was first exposed to the world because of my intrusion. Before I broke in, everything here was safe and sound, and it has been like this for hundreds of years. But his own appearance caused the monster to wake up by accident. In terms of emotion and reason, I have the responsibility to deal with this scourge. Even if he dies, or if his thoughts are not clear, even if he survives, he will not feel good. Moreover, if the scourge here is not dealt with now, this secret realm will inevitably bring disaster to the entire human society. At that time, I still have to get involved, and it is impossible to ignore it. Nitero, Jin, you two go up there, I'll take a look over the first. But Jin and Nitero had just walked a few steps, when Fisher suddenly spoke, which made the two stop involuntarily. It's impossible to separate at this time. Jin frowned. Then you guys go there with me first. Fisher turned his head, with a serious expression and said without doubt, what's the matter? Seeing Fisher's expression, both Jin and Nitero were a little surprised, and then asked seriously. After this trip, it was the first time they saw such a reaction on Fisher's face. Did you feel something? Well, I feel like we need to go there if we want to survive here. Fisher nodded. You don't believe the records on the stone tablet I mentioned earlier, do you? Hearing this, Jin's complexion was strange and he was a little puzzled. No, it's another matter. I have to go there. I feel that the opportunity I felt before should be there. Fisher shook his head and then explained. Fisher didn't lie to the two, but really felt this way. Of course, that wasn't the main reason Fisher insisted on going. The main reason is because, just now, the system's prompt to match sounded again in Shell's mind. Ding. Congratulations to the host for meeting the mutant god system for the first time, and the sign-in has been triggered. May I ask the host to sign in? Faced with this situation, Fisher naturally signed in directly. As a result, Fisher once again got a check-in task. Task name. First encounter with mutant gods. Mission brief introduction. Ask the host to go to the steel to sign in. Mission reward. One opportunity. This is the check-in task Fisher got. The system said that there is a chance. Is this false? Chapter 60 Bear Riding Man. Lemuel. System becomes god. Okay, then let's go over the first. Neat Tero and Jin looked at each other, and then Jin said. Reaching a consensus, the three of them walked towards a huge stone monument standing halfway up the mountain. That is exactly what Jin said the stone tablet that records some strange characters. It is also the place where Jin and others have been drawing power for the past few years and sealing the immortal immortal monster in their mouths. But now, this steel is the object of their vigilance. And just as Fisher and others were rushing towards the direction of the steel, the originally calm volcano made a huge noise. The entire volcano began to vibrate violently, and then, orange-red lava rose into the sky, adding a different color to the dark sky, and the continuous stream of lava flowed down the mountain. That monster rioted. Seeing this scene, Jin's first reaction was not to care about the eruption of the volcano, but to think of the monsters that had been sealed in the past. Speed up. Nitero frowned looking at the soaring magma column above his head, and then urged Fisher and Jin. However, as soon as the words fell, a large cloud of black mist appeared in the red lava column at the crater. As soon as the black mist appeared, it rushed towards Fisher quickly. The speed was so fast that it appeared halfway up the mountain in the blink of an eye faster than flowing magma. When Jin and Nitero saw this scene, their pupils shrank immediately, and a thought energy that was several times stronger than the original energy burst out from their bodies instantly. The golden Avalakite Zvaro appeared in Fisher's sight. Although Jin's body is not like Nitero's, the Nian Chi erupting from his body is even more terrifying than Nitero's. Jin's Nian Chi is almost everywhere within a radius of 100 meters. In just a blink of an eye, as soon as Fisher realized it, Nitero and Jin were already entangled with the black mist. Fisher, 
Leave this place to us for the time being. You go there first and pay attention to safety. A violent roar came over in an instant, but Jin's voice was louder than the roar, and it reached Fisher's ears. This guy is coming for me. This was Fisher's first thought after seeing the black mist entangled with Jin and Nitero. As expected of the top five n, I'm still far behind the two of them. Looking at the two who were fighting against the black mist, a trace of admiration flashed in Fisher's eyes. I just sensed the purpose of the black mist, but Jin and Nitero had already sensed it, and blocked the black mist immediately letting myself leave here. In this regard, Fisher cannot compare. Knowledge of this kind of thing cannot be improved as quickly as strength. It requires various experiences. Staring at the two of them and the black mist, Fisher turned around and left. However, just when Fisher was about to turn around and rush towards the huge stone monument halfway up the mountain, Fisher was slightly taken aback. Because, Helu, where Nitero and Jin fought against each other, changed at this time. The originally invisible black mist appeared at this time. The black mist kept wriggling and finally turned into a handsome man riding a black bear and holding a snake in his hand. Is this monster like this? It feels a little familiar, but for a moment I can't figure out where the familiarity is. He muttered in his heart, but Fisher didn't continue to delay because of this, and his figure flashed, turning into a bolt of lightning and flashing towards the halfway up the mountain. At this time, Fisher naturally wouldn't rush over slowly, and launched with all his strength, just two breaths, and Fisher appeared in front of the stone tablet. Before landing, Fisher had a very bad feeling. Sure enough. As soon as Fisher fell to the ground, the huge stone tablet emitted a fierce light. Then a gentle voice came from the giant stone tablet. It's unbelievable that the source of thunder is controlled by a human being. I, Lamiel, want this body. Accompanied by this sound was a white ray of light, which rushed towards Fisher with lightning speed, so fast that even Fisher, as a user of the thunder fruit ability, could not react. When Fisher reacted, the white light had already landed on Fisher. Zero dot 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 seeking flowers. In an instant. Fisher felt that his ability to control his body was completely fluctuated, and this white power directly entered his mind, trying to devour his soul. However, as soon as this white light entered Fisher's mind, before he could act, a scream came out, which kept echoing in Fisher's mind. Then, the system prompt sounded in Fisher's mind. Sign in successfully, congratulations to the host for getting the opportunity, the broken divinity of the fallen angel Lemuel. Standing in front of a huge stone tablet in a daze, Fisher didn't make any movement, just stood there quietly and his pupils had a little focus. As for why this happened, it was because Fisher was receiving an incomparably huge amount of information at this time. These messages are very broken, broken pieces that cannot be connected at all. That was the memory of the fallen angel Lemuel that the system said, a very broken and chaotic memory. I don't know how long it took before Fisher fully received these broken memories. The unfocused ties gradually recovered, and Fisher gradually regained his will. What an incredible memory. The tone was emotional, but the expression was a little weird. As for why it is weird, it is naturally the memories that Fisher received belong to the fallen angel Lemuel. Nun's pantheon is really a mutant pantheon. Has the Nun system become a god? Is there anyone on the dark continent who has walked out of this path? It's really interesting. However, the immediate priority now is to help Neat Tero and Kim deal with Sambu. Although that guy has been severely injured by Lemuel, he is not something that Neat Tero and Jin can deal with. System, you gave me this so-called broken divinity to deal with this guy. Fisher thought silently looking at Jin and Neat Tero who had been beaten back and forth in the distance. In the next moment, Fisher's figure flashed, turning into a bolt of lightning and entering the battlefield, intervening in the battle of the three of them in an instant. Boom. Inch. Chapter 61. Bowson. Deal. Are you two okay? Floating quietly in the middle of the battlefield, Fisher asked Neat Tero and Jin without looking back. In front of Fisher, the man riding the black bear did not move at this time, but looked at Fisher quietly. Do you think we seem to be okay? Jin stared at the bear riding man fearfully, with an ugly expression on his face. At this time, Jin's body was covered with black mist. His bloodless lips had turned dark purple, his face was ashen, and even the whites of his eyes were turning purple. Not far away, Nitero also had the same expression, staring at the place ahead with great fear. You don't need to ask to know that both of them are poisoned at this time, and the toxicity is very strong, even if they have already drunk the antidote made by Gailu, it is useless. That is to say, the two 240 are strong enough to suppress the poison they have been poisoned by, but some weaker ones, such as Crook and Gailu, would have died of poison a long time ago. No, Gallo, as a poison hunter, shouldn't. In just a few minutes, Jin and Nitero fell into such a situation, which shows how terrifying the enemy's strength is. No, it should be said how terrifying the toxicity of the black mist released by the enemy is. Originally, both Jin and Nitero felt that even if they were not opponents, it was still possible to fight this monster for a period of time. However, they all miscalculated. The ability of this monster is too terrifying. In just a few minutes, the five ninjas of the two human kingdoms directly changed into their present ghost appearances. Thinking about it now, 
How lucky they were to seal this monster here a few years ago. No, it should be said that this monster was deliberately sealed by them. You two little guys, not bad. One has cultivated into the point where time is involved, and the other has cultivated out of the domain. As humans, you two are the best among the elite. Both Nitero and Kim praised. As soon as these words came out, both Nitero and Jin were stunned and their eyes gradually changed from fear to doubt. Because both of them could hear the kindness in the words of the man riding the bear. Bona fide? How is it possible? How can there be kindness in this monster? It's a ridiculous joke. However, what Fisher said next left the two of them in a daze, and a series of doubts appeared in their minds. Who I am? Where am I? What should I do? Hurry up and get rid of the poison on them. Do you want to fight to the death with me? If you want, then I don't mind accompanying you. Fisher looked at the handsome man in front of him, and said lightly, without hiding the threat in his words. Goodwill? Fisher doesn't think that Busong, one of Solomon's 72 demon gods, will have goodwill towards humans. The reason for this attitude is because he is afraid of the broken divinity in his body. Although it is a broken divinity, once it erupts, combined with the power of the thunder fruit in his body, it is enough to severely injure Song Bu, who is already dying, and even kill him. However, if he does so, Fisher himself will have to pay a huge price. The man in front of him riding a bear and holding a poisonous snake is one of the 72 pillars of Solomon in the western myths and legends of Fisher's previous life. The top 20 demon god, Busong. Busong and King Solomon rank 20th among the 72 demon gods. He is a beautiful man riding a bear holding a poisonous snake. He can discover hidden facts and treasures, no ancient and modern, and can answer theologians' questions about the beginning of chaos. The reason why there are constantly changing terrifying and highly poisonous poisons in this secret realm is because the poisonous snake in Busong's hand spreads out when it usually breathes. Well, don't be so hostile. I'll get rid of the poison on them. Busong waved his hands again and again to show that he was very friendly. Then, with a wave of his hand, two strands of black mist flew out from the bodies of Jin and Nitero. The faces of Jin and Nitero recovered visibly to the naked eye. Recovered. Jin and Nitero felt the changes in themselves. They were both surprised, and then they looked at Fisher and Busong in disbelief. Very well, from now on, there will be no conflict between us. You stay here, we won't bother you again, but you don't go out of the secret realm. Seeing that Jin and Nitero recovered. Fisher was satisfied nodding his head. He put his eyes on Busong and said seriously. Do you think I will leave here? Busong said, shaking his head and smiling bitterly when he heard the words. No matter what your situation is, I will put it here. If you let me know that you came out of the secret realm and harmed human beings, then I will come back here again. At that time, there will be no room for discussion between you and me. Fisher shook his head, not paying attention to his bitter expression. His expression was still serious. No, let's do it another way, Fisher. Right. Let's make a deal. Seeing Fisher's seriousness, Busong's face became serious, and he said to Fisher, Trade? Yes, deal. With your strength, you will go to our place sooner or later. At that time, come here when you go, and bring me there, so that this secret realm can disappear directly, and it can be regarded as eliminating a hidden danger for your human country 4.0. Of course, since it's a transaction, I will naturally pay the same amount. You should know about the poisonous snake in my hand. I'll give you the reward after erasing his divine sense. Busong seriously proposed. Can you leave here? Fisher heard this, but did not reply to his proposal, but instead focused on this point. It is possible to go out, but it will gradually weaken over time. Busong nodded and said. Weak? Are you not afraid that I will kill you while you are weak? Don't be afraid, since I dare to propose that, then naturally there is a way to protect myself. Busong shook his head, not afraid of Fisher's threat. Chapter 62, Immortality Strength is God. Hey, Fisher, what's going on? On the flying boat of the Hunter Association, Jin frowned at Fisher and asked worriedly. Also present were Nitero, Crook, and Gailu, all of whom were also looking at Fisher, their eyes full of doubts, especially Nitero. Entering the secret realm this time was anticlimactic, making him confused. Now he was eager to know what happened to the monster he and Jin had dealt with before. At this time, Several people have left the secret realm and embarked on the return journey. And the matter of V5 that Crook and Gailu had just contacted was nothing. It's really because the three of Fisher came back too fast. Before their contact was communicated to the international high level, the three of Fisher came back, and also got a result of not caring about this secret realm. So this thing just stopped. Of course, in this case, Nitero, who will return to the Hunter Association, will also report to the international high level in 2009. Hey! Have you ever thought that people will become so-called gods after cultivating to a certain level? Facing the questions from several people, Fisher was silent for a while, organized his words, and then asked back with a slight smile on his lips. Dot. As soon as these words came out, several people present were stunned. They had never thought of such a thing. People can indeed prolong their lifespan by practicing to a high level, which can be seen from Nitero. Don't look at Nitero, who is already so old, but his physical condition and functions are very strong. It is no problem to live for decades and he is more alive than some young people. Other than that is strength, 
a strong man can completely form an army by himself. However, even so, they never thought that they could reach the point of becoming gods by practicing. When Fisher mentioned this, their heads froze a bit. In this case, what Fisher said was naturally related to their inquiry. In other words, what they are asking is related to the so-called and becoming a god. Looking at the sluggish people, Fisher ignored them and continued to speak. This time there are two existences in the secret realm we entered. One is the fallen angel Lemuel, and the other is Solomon's 72 demon god Bilibu Song. Both of them came from the Dark Continent hundreds of years ago. To be exact, the two left the Dark Continent while fighting, and entered our side. Hearing Fisher continue to speak, the stunned people quickly came back to their senses. However, after hearing Fisher mentioning the Dark Continent, they were all startled and stood up directly from the cushions, saying in unison, Dark Continent. However, Fisher ignored the reactions of several people and continued to talk. The human country we are in seems to be a restricted area of the Dark Continent, guarded by some kind of power, and the existence of the Dark Continent dare not come easily. Once the existences from the Dark Continent reach their level and enter our place, they will all die for various strange reasons within a short period of time. Unless it integrates into our side and becomes our side's life body, it will be easy to clean up the forces protecting our side. But the two of them at that time were so angry that they forgot this taboo that is well known to the strong in the Dark Continent. In the end, both of them suffered losses in the battle, and a certain force guarding our place took advantage of the void. Lemuel fell first, but because of his strong strength, he retained a part of his soul and power after death, and the rest of the power in his corpse became posthumous thoughts after death opened up that secret realm and integrated it into our side has become a secret realm on our side, so we saved our lives and have been hiding in that huge stone tablet, and the kind of power that can bewitch people's hearts and still carry the breath of thunder is Lemuel's power, that guy wants to integrate into our side, so he needs to find a powerful nemesis carrier, that is, a powerful lightning nemesis, as for Busong, this guy didn't fall, but he was seriously injured, and he hasn't recovered yet, relying on Lemuel's posthumous secret realm to survive, once he leaves the secret realm, he will die in a short period of time due to all kinds of strange disasters. In other words, it is the kind of bad luck that is possessed by broom stars and can kill. So this secret realm is safe from the very beginning. Having said that, Fisher looked at Jin. The others also turned their attention to Jin one after another, with resentful expressions on their faces. It's all this guy's fault, otherwise this kind of thing wouldn't have happened. Jin couldn't stand being stared at like this by several people, so he turned around directly, not daring to look at them. As for the environment in the secret realm, that's because Lemuel's afterlife is still the evolution of some environment on the Dark Continent, and the toxicity in it is transmitted by the 663 Nian Beast poisonous snake in Busong's hand after swallowing the air, and it will change once a month. The Dark Continent, even if we are seriously injured, we are able to injure the two of us to such an extent within a few minutes. What a terrible enemy. Nitera looked sad and deeply moved. Well, don't be so pessimistic. This is the strength of the top powerhouses on the Dark Continent. The strength of the two of you there is not bad. You should be more aware of it after you have been there. Seeing Nitero's appearance, Fisher comforted him. Road. You haven't said what it means then to become a god. At this time, Crook reminded. Ah, Lemuel and Busong have cultivated into the extreme, so that they can become gods. You can live forever, and if you are strong, you are a god. Fisher nodded slightly, his eyes flickering, and then he replied lightly. As soon as these words came out, Several people were shocked. Fisher, how do you know this kind of thing? Crook asked with shortness of breath. Well, please forgive me for not commenting on this point. Fisher glanced at her and said with a faint smile. Then, you know how to become a god. Jellu also asked eagerly. Want to know? There is a price to pay. Chapter 63 Dark Continent Forces, N system becomes a god. It is because of the presence of Fisher that Busong was able to wipe out the poison in both Nitero and Kim. As for good intentions or something, just listen to it, if you really lose it. In Fisher's previous life, Busong was one of Solomon's 72 demon pillars, how could he be a good person? Dang and just praised Gin and Nitero, and it can be seen that this guy still has a superior attitude even after seeing Fisher appear. He was able to do this entirely because he was afraid of the broken divinity in Fisher's body that belonged to Lemuel, which was acquired by the system after erasing Lemuel's soul who wanted to take Fisher away. And in that hellish space at that time, the voice that rang in Xiuzia was Busong's voice. This guy, like Lemuel, noticed the existence of the thunder fruit on Fisher. So he said that sentence, if it is a thunderbolt, the strength is not strong, and Lemuel's arrogant character will definitely not take away Fisher. However, with the existence of the thundering fruit, Fisher is Lemuel's one in a million candidate and the most suitable candidate, because Lemuel is who cultivated the lightning department and became a god. Also because of knowing this, under the volcano, when Fisher said that he should go to the stone monument first instead of looking for him, a song was in a hurry. He didn't care about looking, and broke out directly trying to block Fisher from going to the stone monument. According to Bowson, once Fisher reaches the monument, he will definitely be taken away by Lemuel. At that time, 
a Lemuel who has the source of thunder, the fruit of thunder, he will definitely not be able to deal with it, and it will be his death. But Busong didn't expect that the two ants, Neat Tero and Jin, would react so quickly, they would notice him the moment he acted, and spread and to stop him. After that, he tried his best to stop himself, and let Fisher go to the huge stone monument where Lemuel was. At that time, the voice and the white light from the giant stone tablet were the fallen angel Lemuel that Fisher had mentioned before. This guy, after entering Fisher's body, was wiped out by the system just as he was about to seize it, leaving behind his remaining power, that is, the broken divinity, which was given to Fisher by the system as a sign in reward. What Busong fears is the broken divinity in Fisher. Once Fisher uses this broken divinity as a one-time divinity, he can definitely be seriously injured, and he will not be far from death by then. And Fisher has no plan to use this broken divinity as a one-time item, because it is not worthwhile. So the two sides reached a consensus that Fisher would not do anything, and Bowson would not leave this secret place. At the same time, Fisher also obtained many memories of Lemuel's life from this broken divinity. However, because of the broken relationship, this memory is not complete, it is all segmented. But, it also taught Fisher a lot. The Dark Continent is full of strange things. According to Fisher's memories, the creatures in the Dark Continent are divided into three types. One of them is the god who, like Ramil and Bowson, was assembled from various myths in Fisher's previous life. A group of gods who can become gods through cultivation. The other is all kinds of strange monsters. The degree of exaggeration of these monsters is comparable to the monsters in the May world of the captive world of Mayfood. There are all kinds of strange things and prehistoric creatures abound everywhere, each of which is extremely powerful. Three of the disasters brought back by the five major dark continents listed by international high-level officials are all, even compared with god groups, they are not inferior at all. And the last one is conceptual creatures, this kind of force is the most terrifying, some of the most terrifying ones are not willing to provoke even the first two forces. For example, in the Zoldic family, Nanika, who is one with Aluka, and Zorba, the immortal disease among the five major disasters, and the equivalent exchange of happiness and life, Pap, the educating beast, is this kind of conceptual creature, there is no way to start. These conceptual creatures seem to have certain rules, which make the other two forces in the dark continent very afraid and will not provoke them easily. And this is not the main gain of Fisher's broken divinity. The most important gain is the role of broken divinity. And this has to say that the system that Fisher said before has become a god. The beginning of becoming a god in the system is to cultivate and, and accumulate thoughts and energy. And if one wants to become a god, then one needs an extremely huge cultivation of mind and energy. According to the Nchi value calculated by Kulus and Pockling, a person needs at least 5 million to become a god. And this directly stopped countless and people. You know, even Menthuthuipi, the personal guard of the Ant King has only a few hundred thousand thoughts, less than one million. It is impossible for human beings to cultivate such a huge mind energy value with a limited life. Even the reborn ant king probably wouldn't be able to reach this value. However, if given time, it will reach this level. And even if it reaches this value, if you want to become a god, you need to transform your thoughts. The most important function of the broken divinity obtained by Fisher is to guide and transform into Shenxi, and finally into divine power, thus igniting the divine fire of the system, turning his own into magic and becoming a god. Nn's transformation of Shenxi into divine power is the most difficult, and it is countless times more difficult than the value of Nianchi. However, Fisher, with his broken divinity, is completely, well, able to ignore this difficulty. Just ask this kind of thing, how could Fisher be wasted because of a badly injured demon in Bowson? With this broken divinity, there is only one difficulty for Fisher to become a god in the Nn system, and that is the Nchi value. But that's nothing to Fisher either. After all, Fisher has a tenfold increase in assist ability. Fisher can do things that ordinary people can't do. Even the top five and like Nitera can't do it. Not to mention Fisher has another goodie in Rift. Vertical Bar Crook, Gay Ilu, leave. From now on you will be my direct butlers. Standing in front of the trial gate, Fisher turned his head and said to Crook and Gale behind him. Ah, I'm already mentally prepared for this. I see. Chapter 64 Another way to become a god. Become a god with grace, strong and immortal. This is the instinctive pursuit and common fault of practitioners. Before I heard of it, some people may have this kind of thought in their hearts, but this kind of thought doesn't hold much weight in their hearts. However, after knowing the clear path, this pursuit is completely magnified. This is the case with Gallo and Crook. So the two decided to follow Fisher. Because Fisher has the seeds of the vitality tree in his hand, he has the opportunity to cultivate the vitality tree and obtain the vitality fruit. This is currently the best treasure to enhance the cultivation of mind energy. At the same time, Fisher also received the inheritance of the Nn system god Lemuel, which is the most precious. Fisher, who has obtained the inheritance of the gods of the Nn system, as long as his mind and energy are cultivated enough, the chance of becoming a god is very high. And following Fisher's side, although the chance is slim in their situation, 
This possibility still exists. Nianchi cultivation can be cultivated by themselves, and if the vitality tree is cultivated, they will also have the opportunity to obtain the vitality fruit. Although the 5 million Nianchi value is very far away, there is always hope. At the same time, by Fisher's side, the two can also ask 013 Fisher about the transformation of N. As for Nitero and Kim, as the top five N in the human kingdom, both of them have their own arrogance, and it is impossible to condescend to Fisher just because of this. And Crook and Gailu are not so proud. Nitero and Jin are two of the top five N in the human country, one is the president of the Hunter Association, and the other has presidential power, and has a great reputation and influence in the world, which is why it is like this. But the two of them don't have such a big name. At best they are only one of the twelve earthly branches. They have little influence and reputation in the human kingdom, and they don't worry that they will lose their reputation in the human kingdom if they become Fisher's subordinates. Face. There really isn't much pressure to be Fisher's direct butler. Soon, the two were taken to their bedroom by Fisher. Fisher credits the pair with favors. In fact, Fisher's God's grace also has a chance to become a god. The grace of the gods is to use the blood of the gods to establish a connection, Aja, to obtain the blood of the gods. To some extent it is already considered a son of a god, a demigod. This is also the reason why in the dungeon world, those gods like to call members of the family members children. Of course, there are only a few of them. After all, the characters of those gods are all foolish, and few of them are serious. That's what I said, but to really be worthy of being a demigod still requires the efforts of the user of grace. Only when you reach the peak of grace, you have the chance to gain the chance to become a god from the blood of God. The same is true for Fisher's God's grace. However, Fisher is not a god. If the favor users under Fisher want to have the same conditions as the adventurers in the dungeon, then Fisher needs to become a god. Once Fisher becomes a god, then Fisher's grace to Kripiku and others will also become the blood of God by going back to the source. And then Kripiku's favor will be the same as that of the gods in the dungeon. But Fisher's god's grace is different. As the owner of grace, Fisher only needs to upgrade step by step. After reaching the limit, Fisher will naturally ignite the divine fire and become a god directly. However, for this, Fisher does not hold out too much hope, because the way to upgrade God's grace is to rely on fighting and killing powerful enemies to make yourself stronger. However, this also requires enough strong people to feed him, to fight with him. There are many on the Dark Continent, but Fisher doesn't dare to go there now. At least Fisher won't act until he reaches a certain level of strength. Because, after the system killed Lemuel who wanted to take Fisher, Fisher was already targeted by the fallen angel Pantheon on the Dark Continent. Once Fisher sets foot on the land of the Dark Continent, Fisher can guarantee that the fallen angels will come to him as soon as possible. Then there will be fun. One year later, if Fisher wants to follow the Kajin Empire's Dark Continent operation, then his strength must be at least two or three times stronger than the Five N. Otherwise he will just die. For becoming a god, Fisher has two options. The first is in Hui becoming a god, and the second is in System becoming a god. However, the first choice is basically blocked, leaving only a gap. The choice left to Fisher is that the N system has become a god. The good news is that Fisher's chances are great. With a tenfold increase, Fisher's Nchi cultivation is increasing rapidly every day, and it is estimated that it will not take a few decades for Fisher to reach the conditions for becoming a god in the Nchi system. When the time comes to use the broken divinity to transform Nianki into Shenxi, and then into divine power, it means that Fisher has become a god. At that time, the favor users under Fisher's command can also rely on Fisher's favor to reduce the difficulty of becoming a god. Kuripaku and the others are different from Fisher because they have not been targeted. There is not much danger in going to the Dark Continent. You can practice in the Dark Continent, find powerful existences to fight, and fight to upgrade your favor. It's incredible. I didn't expect that there would be such a way to become stronger. Sitting on the edge of the bed, Crook looked at the parchment in his hand with a look of amazement and deep emotion. This is the first time she has heard of such a thing as grace. As long as you can learn from others, you can quickly improve your strength. This kind of thing is not too simple. Ah, indeed. I never thought that there would be such a good auxiliary ability in the world. Gailu also showed emotion. With the description of Inahui, you have an extra path to become a god. Because the grace has been raised to the extreme, you can also rely on the grace to become a god. Facing the surprise of the two, Fisher said lightly. Fisher never felt that he could not grow up to be comparable to a god. He has always been very confident in himself, so the answers he gave to the two were also full of confidence and nothing false. Crook. Gailu. Chapter 65 Feedback. Silverlet Fisher Thriller Crook and Gay Ilu couldn't wait to run to the training room to fight, wanting to see the effect of N. Hui and Fisher were still in his room at this time. Both Crook and Gay Ilu's aptitude is not weak, stronger than Manchai, so their joining has been recognized by the system. Fisher got two faction check-ins and two faction member feedback. Ding! Congratulations to the host for obtaining the ability feedback from Manchai, a member of the faction, and the host for obtaining Crook's beast familiar ability. Beast ability, the ability to manipulate animals. Ding! 
Congratulations to the host for getting the ability feedback from the power member Gay Ailu. Congratulations to the host for getting Gay Ailu's circle. Circle. Gay Ailu has practiced the advanced technique throughout her life, and its range reaches a radius of 2 kilometers. Circle. The ability to guard beasts. Speaking of which, Crook does seem to have this ability. In the original book, Hunter's election conference was notified to Hunter by this guy, Crook, who manipulated a large number of carrier pigeons to inform many staff of Hunter's election conference. Almost forgot this guy has this ability. It's no wonder that the ability that Crook showed in the secret realm before was too weird and targeted compared to his identity, so I forgot about it for a while. The only animals that can be controlled are ordinary animals, and those phantom beasts are not among them, which is a bit regrettable. After receiving the rewards from the system, Fisher also understood the situation of the beast mastering ability obtained from Crook. However, Gay Ilu's feedback surprised me. Is it specially developed for your own ability to identify toxicity? Circle, the ability that Fisher already mastered, has a range of about 250 meters. But this time, after getting Gay Ilu's feedback, Fisher's circle directly expanded to a diameter of 2000 meters, a full eightfold increase. Does Gay Ilu have such a strong will to release this degree of circle? Thinking in his heart, Fisher's thought moved and the powerful circle spread out in an instant. In just one minute, a quarter of the Zoldyk family's castle appeared in Sil's mind. It's really a good ability, it saved me a few months of cultivation. Feeling the picture in his mind, the corner of Fisher's mouth slightly raised, revealing a faint smile. Huh? Indus, what is he doing here? Suddenly, Fisher noticed that Wutong was coming towards him, and he was almost at the door of his room, and he was a little puzzled. Withdrawing the circle, Fisher got up and went to the door and opened it. What caught my eye was Wu Tong's gesture of raising his hand to knock on the door. Master Fisher, Master is here to invite you. After being slightly dazed for a second, Wu Tong said hastily, Daddy, I know, let's go now. Fisher frowned slightly, and then replied lightly, but muttered in his heart, I probably want to ask myself about Crook and Gale. Led by Indus, Fisher came to the dark room where his father Silver always stayed. What are you doing? Dad, Fisher asked directly when they met. Why? The twelve earthly branches of the Hunter Association will become your direct stewards. Sure enough, the meeting just started asking about the situation of Luke and Gay Ilu. Of course it's because I subdued them, Fisher said lightly. Dot. Hearing Fisher's answer, Silver remained silent, and just looked at Fisher with a blank expression, as if to say, I listen to you to continue making up. Fisher didn't care about this at all, so he looked at Silver quietly and didn't speak. After a while, seeing that Fisher didn't want to change his words, Silver sighed slightly and didn't continue to ask about Crook and Gailu, and changed the subject, what happened in the Emil secret realm, my eyeliner in the international high level after receiving the information, the twelve earthly branches of the two hunter associations you subdued handed over the twelve earthly branches authority to the international high level, to block or even relocate the nearby cities, what happened to make the two of them fight so violently, personnel from the Zoldyk family have infiltrated all over the world, and even international high-level personnel have personnel from the Zoldyk family, and they can obtain the information at any time. This is also the reason why the Zoldyk family, as a family of assassins, exists above board in this world, even occupying the mountain as king has not been crusaded. Zero dot 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 seeking flowers, because the international high-level is also afraid of the power of the Zoldyk family. Maybe a few poor roses can destroy the entire Kukalu mountain. But when the international high level issued this order, the Zoldyk family would receive this information at the first time and respond accordingly. In the past history, there have been high level international officials who wanted to touch the Zoldyk family, but just an hour later, the congressman who advocated dealing with the Zoldyk family was killed in full view and under the protection of many bodyguards. The international high level people are afraid, after all, there are killers who can take away their names at any time, who is not afraid. Within a square inch, the enemy's country is full of people, and when everyone is angry, Blood is spattered five steps away. No matter how great the power is, without strong strength, it is still an ant, which can be destroyed at will. Zero. And the Zoldyk family will not abide by the unwritten tacit agreement on the white road like Nitero, and will not do anything to the international higher level. What about the international top? It offended me anyway. Since then, a tacit understanding has been formed between the top international executives and the Zoldyk family, that is, do not violate the river. If you don't touch me, I won't touch you either. We live in peace with each other. The creatures from the Dark Continent appeared over there, but it has been resolved, Fisher replied, and did not hide anything. However, the explanation was very casual, only the result, not the process. Yes, I see. Your strength is enough, and the direct subordinate forces have been established very well. Tell me when you want to take over the family. Silver is also a straightforward person. After Fisher said so, he didn't continue to ask, but directly threw the family and dropped a bomb. It's too fast. I'm still far behind, and I need to practice more. Hearing what his father Silver said, 
Fisher's eyelids twitched involuntarily, and he refused without thinking. The blue is better than the blue, and you have surpassed me. There is no doubt about it, so I am relieved that the family will be entrusted to you. Silver said to Fisher with a rare smile on his face. No, 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 don't you understand me? I mean, I don't want to be tied to the head of the house so soon. I still want to spend a few more years. Into Chapter 66 Member Sign-In Rewards System Eccentricity Fleeing away from Silver and returning to his room, Fisher sighed slightly. He's only 13 and he doesn't want to be bound by the Zoldyks so soon. He still wants to spend a few more years in the wild. Shaking his head slightly, shaking off his further silver's urging, Fisher put his mind on the system. I still have two factions that have not been signed in yet. I don't know what kind of abilities the system will give to Crook and Gay Ilu. Thinking of this, Fisher's idea moved, and he started the force sign-in belonging to the two. Ding! The sign-in is successful, congratulations to the host for obtaining a copy of the original human body of the fairy. Crook's special version, Origin of Immortal Body, special edition for Crook, the immortal body of Azura Otsutsuki from Naruto World, the user can continuously obtain huge vitality continuously, if you are lucky, you can even develop a chakra that does not belong to this world, ding. The sign-in is successful, congratulations to the host for obtaining the poisonous fruit, Gailu special version without side effects, toxic fruit, Gailu special version without side effects, after use, it will become a highly poisonous person which can release severe poison, no side effects. I can understand the poisonous fruit. After all, Gay Ailu is a poison hunter, and her ability should have something to do with poison. But what does Crook mean by this reward? In addition to the beast familiar, Crook's ability is the kind of light that can easily kill aggressive plants with strong vitality that he used in the secret realm before. But what does this ability have to do with life force? Is the main developed by Crook related to vitality? Fisher was puzzled, but he didn't think about why this happened. Crook is at home. Instead of thinking about it by himself and coming up with some inaccurate answers, it is better to ask Crook directly. Just enough to give two rewards to both of them, immortal body and poisonous fruit. No matter what kind of these two are, they will be very powerful in the end. In the end, the human body of the fairy will become the same level as the first generation of Naruto, and the poisonous fruit is developed to the final level of Admiral. These two levels, when converted into the world of Hunter x Hunter, are stronger than Grandpa Gino. It can be compared with, or even surpassed. The three major guards of the Ant King, well, probably at the level of Nitero. However, if you fight physically with Nitero's Bshi Guanyin, you will be beaten. However, if you use other moves to counter the bomb, it will be fine. After all, not everyone is as confident as the Ant King, who is so confident in his body that he insists on using his body to fight Nitero. Even Fisher, if his current strength is converted into the strength level of One Piece World, he has not reached the Admiral level. If you want to reach this level, you need to continue to practice and continue to develop the Thunder Fruit. However, speaking of it this way, among my four direct stewards, the one with the weakest reward seems to be Karipika. Menchai, Gallo and Crook got much better rewards than Karipika. The upper limit of Menchai's may sell is very high, and Fisher is not sure about its limit. The rewards obtained by Crook and Gailu are fully developed to be the proper five and levels. Only Karipika, after the restriction and Oath Offset card offsets the restriction, Karipika only obtained the same mine energy cultivation base as his father Silver. This is already very powerful among ordinary n but this person is afraid of comparisons. Karapika's rewards are much worse than those of Menchai, Crook and Gailu. From this point of view, the system is a bit biased. I don't know if it's an illusion, but when Fisher thought of this, Fisher felt a strong resentment. Karapika? This idea popped up in his heart. Fisher thought of Karapika's weak, feminine face. His whole body went numb. Goosebumps popped up, and he quickly shook off the thought of the tongue that suddenly appeared in his mind. No, no, Karapika's qualifications are very good and he will definitely be able to reach the level of the top 5 in the future. Thinking about it this way, the system does not seem to be partial. Stepping out of the bedroom, Fisher rushed towards the training room. What the hell are these two people doing? The training room is so strong, and the sound insulation is so good, yet such a violent roar can be heard. When he came outside the training room, Fisher listened to the sound coming from the training room, and slightly some speechless. This is the training room. It doesn't sleep in the arena, it's just for people to train. How can you do this? Um so I am not qualified to say that. A training room was destroyed when fighting Dad before. Shaking his head, Fisher opened the door of the training room, walked in against the more intense roar, and then closed the door. Hey, it should be said that it is indeed the twelve earthly branches. Even for women, fighting is so terrifying. Standing in the corridor surrounded by walls, Fisher looked down. Perhaps it was because Fisher understood and misunderstood the method of improving in Huai, so the battle between the two was completely carried out in a clumsy way of adding punches and kicks, punching to the flesh without using the development experience at all. This has created the current scene where the two are constantly confronting each other. The powerful airwave even turned into a circular impact, constantly venting out in all directions, 
causing the cracks on the dilapidated ground to continue to expand. 2.7 This kind of battle scene, even if it is some enhancer battles, you might as well let it go. Shaking his head, Fisher took a deep breath, and then yelled out loudly, You too, come down for me. The deafening roar turned into a sonic ring and blasted out, directly intervening in the battlefield, making the two people who were fighting each other stop. Fisher, why are you here? The two who stopped looked up at the same time, and then asked in unison, I need you guys for something. Come with me, Fisher said lightly, then turned and walked towards the door. Gailu and Crook looked at each other, smiled at each other, and leaned towards each other. They reached out and clapped their hands, and then walked towards the door hand in hand. Dot. Chapter 67 Crook's Ability I didn't expect to be able to get so many good things by being your direct butler. Feeling the huge vitality in his body, Crook's face was full of surprises. The original Crook still hesitated a little after he became Fisher's direct butler, and there was a little bit of regret, but it was not obvious. This is a common problem of the strong. After all, a strong man suddenly becomes one subordinate, anyone will not adapt to it, and will have all kinds of awkward emotions. But now, Crook is completely free of these messy thoughts. After all, she had only just become Fisher's subordinate, and she had obtained such a huge favor from Fisher before assuming the responsibilities of her subordinate. Whether it is the grace of God or the origin of the immortal body, these two things are enough to wipe away the awkwardness in Crook's heart. Crook now has nothing but gratitude for Fisher. The same is true for Gailu on the side, looking at Fisher with gratitude and firmness in his eyes. My ability can communicate with the existence of the underworld to get the own nine good things that much you. But I don't understand, Crook. Why did you get this? Is yawn related to vitality? Fisher still asked the doubts in his heart. Ah, you said this. Mine is indeed related to vitality. Using thoughts as a medium to absorb the vitality of plants. Didn't I release that kind of light in that secret realm before? That kind of light contains the power to restrain plants, and then forcefully snatch their vitality. However, it can only be used when the gap between the enemy and us is not large. And the use of that light also requires vitality. I take the life force from the plants, turn it into that kind of light and cycle back and forth. Of course, I also have other to use against the enemy. However, it's all linked to vitality. The stronger the vitality, the stronger the power of mine. So, Fisher, the origin you gave me is completely tailor-made for me. When mentioning his own situation, Crook was extremely excited and excited. So that's the case. I said, how could the system give you such a thing? A fairy body with huge vitality and the ability to continuously generate vitality is indeed the most suitable reward. After hearing Crook's answer, Fisher suddenly realized. However, Immediately, Shell's face became weird. As a plant hunter, you are doing things that take away the vitality or plants. You are putting the cart before the horse, Fisher said with a strange expression. In Fisher's understanding, shouldn't all plant hunters cultivate plants? Crook was lucky, actually thinking of searching for life force from plants. How is it possible? Mine can also act on plants. Okay, I use this kind of n to cultivate plants that are about to die, and I have revived many kinds of plants that are about to become extinct. Hearing Fisher's words. Crook immediately retorted dissatisfied. Recovery, which means you used your to bring those dying plants out of the endangered list. That's natural, otherwise why do you think I'm a twelve earthly branch? Crook crossed his arms and replied confidently. Well, the seeds of the vitality tree will be handed over to you. I'll give you half a year to help me revive and plant the vitality tree seeds. Hearing this, Fisher nodded in satisfaction, and then gave Crook a task. That's natural, even if you don't tell me, I still want that seed from you. I want it to be cultivated by Yankee's school. Crook nodded repeatedly. Crook would have asked Fisher about it even if Fisher hadn't mentioned it. After all, the vitality tree is the key to whether or not our mind energy can be rapidly increased in the future to complete the five million mind energy required to become a god. Well, I'll leave it to you. Fisher nodded, and then prepared to leave here. However, just after taking a few steps, Fisher stopped, turned around, and opened his mouth to spit out a cloud of black purple mist, which he controlled in his palm. Gailu, I will give you this cloud of poisonous mist. It will be of great benefit to you. Fisher controlled the poisonous mist and floated in front of Gailu, said to Gailu, This is what Fisher obtained from Song's trade. The ability gained after the poisonous snake. After absorbing Zin's poisonous snake, Fisher's poison resistance has been indescribably improved, and at the same time, he has also gained the ability to create highly poisonous. This cloud of poisonous fog was created by Fisher. I see. Gailu nodded gratefully, then stretched his hand into the poisonous mist and began to absorb the cloud of poisonous mist. Gailu, who ate the poisonous fruit, knew very well how much the poisonous mist in front of her was of great help to her. Now that she is Fisher's subordinate, she will not be hypocritical and accept it directly. Well, come on, come to me if you need something. Fisher nodded slightly, and left here. This time it was really leaving. Speaking of which, according to this situation, the members of the Zoldyk family are not as powerful as the direct stewards I tamed. Walking in the corridor, Fisher thought of this. Can't help but smile. Shaking his head. 
Fisher didn't think much about it, even if he is powerful. He is still his direct steward and his subordinate, so there is no need to get too entangled with it. However, in three months' time it will be the auction in New Kexin City. The members of Phantom Troop should be leaving by now. I don't know how many people from Phantom Troop will die this time. Ku-160 Rapika refused to let him make a move, and wanted to deal with his hatred alone. So even if Karapika is strong now, it is impossible to wipe out the entire brigade during the auction in New Kexin City, and it is best to just kill a few of them individually. Ding. Sign-in has been triggered. May the host sign in? While thinking about Karapika, a system voice sounded in Fisher's mind without warning. In this regard, Fisher is not surprised. He is immune to his salted fish system, and he is not surprised when there will be a prompt. Sign in. Ding. Sign in successfully. Congratulations to the host for getting the sweet fruit, version without side effects. Ding. Sign in has been triggered. May I ask if the host has signed in? Just after signing in, before Fisher had time to look at the system rewards, the system prompt sounded again in his mind. Fisher, although it was a surprise and surprise, Fisher still signed in. Ding. Sign in successfully. Congratulations to the host for getting the sign in task. Task name, save the Empress. Task content, rescue the three Hancock sisters who have just been sent to the Tan Longren Palace in the Holy Land of Mary Joa. Mission reward, intermediate armed color domineering. Looking at the task of signing in, Fisher fell silent. It was Robin before, and now it is the Empress. The system, what do you want to do? Chapter 68 The system's coquettish operation, Fisher doubles as an older brother again. Not surprisingly, in the face of Fisher's doubts. The system didn't mean to explain at all, and it was still playing dead. For this, Fisher could only sigh speechlessly. Whatever, I'm used to it anyway. But why do I sigh when I get used to it? It's really strange. After making some arrangements, Fisher directly accepted the task. System, send me there. In his room, Fisher ordered lightly. System, you just smash one piece. Would you die in another world? Also, go see Robin. I just don't know how Robin's situation has been in that world for a few years. However, the system's two consecutive check-in tasks are One Piece World. Is this intentional to send me into this world to develop? Looks like it really does. In the world of Hunter x Hunter, his strength is already very strong. There are not many people who can learn from each other in the human kingdom. And the Dark Continent can't go there for the time being. If you want to go there, you have to improve your strength. On the contrary, there are many strong people in the world of One Piece. Several top pirates in the Seven Martial Seas under the King, generals in the Navy, martial level masters, four emperors, emperors, generals. Calamities, captains, etc. Dot. Might be able to take advantage of this mission. I remember that after the task is completed, I can stay for a month. After the sign in task is completed, I can use this month to compete with the Masters of One Piece World. With this in mind, Cher disappeared from the room in a burst of white light, still black in front of the eyes, and then, still black, black. It was night when I went to Ahara, but there were lights anyway. Why is it so dark this time? After slowly scanning the surrounding situation, Fisher finally realized why there was no light and also understood his current situation. This immediately made Fisher curse the system inwardly. S13 system, what's the matter with you? Giving a better identity will kill you. Fisher's current identity is a slave. Yes, you read that right, a slave, like Hancock and others, a slave bought by the Celestial Dragons from the Chambord Islands. The place where Fisher is now is the cell where the slaves were imprisoned in the Holy Land of Marie Jaiwa, and there is more than one person in Fisher. There are other people beside him. The people next to Fisher were none other than the three Hancock sisters who were also sold here. At this time, the three were curled up sleeping on the haystack, with tears in their eyes. Because of the beautiful appearance, they were brought back by the Tan Long people together and locked up with the three Hancock sisters. Moreover, in memory, Fisher and Hancock were locked together in the Chambord Islands auction house, and because of their fellowship, Fisher, who was older than the three, became the elder brother of the three. Fisher is double brother again. It was Robin before, and now it is the three Hancock sisters, and Fisher once again cameo as the brother. However, after receiving the information given by the system, Fisher really wanted to complain loudly. What's the matter? When I was in Ahara, I made a fool of the Navy, so I should have already been on the arrest warrant, so why didn't the auction house in the Chambord Islands know about me? Um, no, no, Cusin was the only one facing me at the time, and that guy couldn't possibly be wearing a camera bug all the time, so even if I was wanted, no one else would have my wanted profile picture. Thinking about it this way, it is normal for me to come to the Chambord Islands and not know my identity. Um, what do I think these are for? Shaking his head, Fisher was speechless at the divergence of his thinking. Looking at the chains attached to his neck, a trace of disgust flashed in Fisher's eyes. In two lifetimes, this was the first time that he was admitted to this thing. System, I remember you. With a thought, a strong thunder and lightning erupted from Fisher's body and the chains on his body were completely destroyed by the lightning in an instant, without even a chance of explosion. Bastard, you dare to destroy the locks? Tilda and Fisher's actions naturally did not deceive the guards outside the cell. When the guards saw the lightning erupting from Fisher's body, 
They immediately roared angrily. A guard was about to open the door with a bunch of keys in his hand, and came in to clean up Fisher. The slaves in the other cells looked at Fisher in astonishment at this time, as if they didn't expect that someone could break the shackles on their bodies. Are these guys pigs? Fisher was a little dumbfounded watching the guard's actions. Is this guy so brave? How dare you yell at yourself and even run in after seeing such a powerful thunder and lightning erupting from me? I don't feel how strong it is, not even a little guy. Brother Fisher, you. At this time, the three Hancock's sisters were also awakened, seeing the changes on Fisher, they exclaimed. Hearing this, Fisher came back to his senses, looked at the three of Hancock, and with a thought, three bolts of lightning precisely landed on the three of Hancock destroying the chains on the three of them without any injuries. This, the three of them looked at their relaxed bodies in shock and couldn't believe it. And this scene was also seen by the slaves in other cells. The eyes of these slaves who had lost their light for a long time suddenly burst out with an extremely strong desire to survive. Vertical bar adult, you want to leave here, right? Please help me, as long as you help me get out of here, I will do my best for you in the future. My lord, me too, my lord. Please show kindness. Grown-ups, grown-ups, at this time, the slaves burst out with an extremely passionate desire to survive, pleading loudly. But at this time, the guards who were angry and wanted to deal with Fisher also reacted at this time, showing panicked expressions one by one. For a long time, because of the relationship between the ten long people, they guarded these slaves who were powerless to resist, showing off their might, so they didn't react for a while, but now, they finally reacted. The little kid in front of them is not an object they can bully and abuse at will but an existence that can easily kill them. For a moment, the faces of all the guards were ashen. The guard closest to the door of the cell had already quickly ran to the outside of the door, begging for help, by new oh, loudly while running. However, the next moment, a thunderbolt fell, and the guard turned into charred charcoal, and fell straight to the ground emitting black smoke. For a while, the other guards who wanted to run didn't dare to take any action at all, fearing that they would become the next young. A group of guys who helped the evildoers, Fisher, after killing the guard who called for help, looked around at the other guards and murmured indifferently. The next moment, countless thunderbolts appeared out of thin air, violently striking all the guards. These guards couldn't even make a scream, so they followed in the footsteps of the previous guard and fell straight to the ground. Afterwards, Fisher glanced around the various prison cells, and with a thought, countless thunderbolts shot out out of thin air again, releasing all the slaves. Hancock, Sanderson here, and Marigold, come with me. Ignoring the many slaves who were shouting excitedly after regaining their freedom, Fisher ordered the three of them to Hancock. Yes, Fisher is high. The three responded quickly. Chapter 69, Do Whatever You Want. The raging fires dyed the sky red across the entire holy land of Mary Jaoa. Fisher ran quickly with Hancock's three little girls. As for the other slaves, after breaking the shackles on them, Fisher ignored them. The reason why these slaves were released was nothing more than to let these slaves attract the attention of the Navy and CP in the Holy Land. Before O'Hara's mission, Fisher was able to deal with it calmly, because O'Hara's mission Fisher came early and he could arrange a backhand, and the enemy's strength was not too strong to be unmatched. But here, the holy land of Mary Jaoa, there are many strong people here. Not to mention the generals of the navy stationed here, there are many powerful people in the holy land of Mary E. Jaoa, including Wu Luxing, Im and so on. This time Fisher came to the mission and there was a slave cell. There is no chance to set up a space imprint outside the holy land Mary Jaoa like the previous mission. After saving Hancock, he took the three of them and moved directly own speed. This mission can be said to be full of crises. It would be fine if the old monsters in the holy land of Mary E. Joa couldn't make a move, but the five old stars might get nervous and make a move. It's just that the garrison personnel of the Navy's 713 headquarters are deployed here, and Fisher thinks that he can still leave here calmly. The Navy headquarters is only deployed here by an elite lieutenant general of the Navy headquarters, and the stronger ones are only admirals. With this lineup, even if Fisher can't beat him, it's still no problem to leave with the three of Hancock. After all, the speed of the thunderous fruit is not just for show. Of course, the guy with the yellow monkey is the exception. As a user with the ability of the shining fruit, that guy is as fast as the person with the ability of the thunder fruit, and he is very restrained by Fisher. Moreover, the key point is that Fisher is not domineering, and cannot deal with those with natural fruit abilities. Previously in Ahara, I wanted to use Kizan as the target to test whether Nian would have any effect on natural fruits, and because Kizan's lack of martial arts morality ended hastily. So Fisher really didn't want to meet Huang at this point in time and this place. Monkey. And these slaves rescued by Fisher were also very smart, they did not run away directly, but released more slaves, making the entire holy land of Mary E. Joy more chaotic, thus gaining the opportunity to escape. The scene is chaotic, and the chances of escape will be greatly increased. In the raging fire, Fisher carried Hancock and the other three on his back, moving quickly. Fisher didn't use the power of the thunder fruit. But even so, 
The speed was terrifying. A distance of nearly hundreds of meters was covered in one breath. Brother Fisher, are you tired? On Fisher's back, Hancock asked worriedly. It's okay, this little thing is nothing to me. Hold on tight and don't fall. While walking fast, Fisher replied without looking back. Yeah, we know, we will definitely hold on. Hancock responded again and again. Although he didn't know why Fisher was carrying the three of his sisters behind his back, Hancock could feel that Fisher's heart was very urgent, so she wouldn't want to run away willfully. Although the strength of the three of Hancock has reached the level where they can go hunting with the nine snake pirates, they are still too weak. The foot strength of the three is still too slow. Fisher didn't want to waste time in this place. Although I don't know what kind of idea the five old stars and others in the anime have to make the Murlocs of Tiger's level make a big fuss in the holy land of Mary Jo and return with a big victory, but Fisher will not relax because of this. After all, once he is discovered, he will definitely not get the same treatment as Tiger. I am too young but I have such a strong strength. This will definitely make the Navy and the people of the Holy Land marry Ejo are very afraid. If it is raging on the sea, the Navy and the people of the Holy Land of Mary Ejoya will be beyond reach, and perhaps they will not deal with themselves. But now in the Holy Land of Mary Ejoa, people on both sides absolutely don't, Aj, mind doing something to themselves and erasing a hidden danger. Therefore, for Fisher, escaping from the Holy Land of Mary Joa is an urgent matter, and ten minutes cannot be delayed. However, the more you worry, the more accidents are likely to happen. This has been confirmed by many people from ancient times to the present. And Fisher is also very sad to encounter this kind of thing. Fisher, who was running with the three of Hancock on his back, rushed towards a large number of navies. The strongest one was wearing a lieutenant general cloak, a silver striped suit, a certain black hat on his head, and a somewhat wretched face uncle. Seeing this guy, Fisher paused, stopped in place, and the corners of his eyes twitched slightly. Mardan, say cow cow. Cow Cow arrives. Fisher also recognized the person in front of him. This guy is the yellow ape who has not yet become a general, Pelusino. I didn't expect such a restraint to come. Even if it is the other two future generals or the current generals, it will be fine. Why did he come here? That's the last thing Fisher wants to see. Brother Fisher, what should we do? Although Hancock is just a fledgling, he still has some understanding of the navy. He knows the position of the person in front of him in the navy, the existence of the rank of vice admiral, and it is definitely a must to appear here the elite lieutenant general of the navy headquarters, so after seeing the yellow monkey, Hancock's heart was lifted, and he was extremely panicked. It's okay, stay on my back and don't move around. Fisher shook his head lightly and instructed. The three little ones nodded quickly when they heard the words, but they still had a sad expression on their faces. They didn't know if they knew this brother during this period of time and could lead them to escape from the hands of these marines. So very scared, they don't want to go back to that dark place anymore. I didn't expect it would be you. It came out a few years ago and then disappeared. I didn't expect to come to Mary Joa. Let the old man guess. You should be the mastermind who attacked Mary Joa this time. It's really scary. The yellow monkey was really different and the tone of every word and sentence was very unbearable. At least Fisher felt an unknown fire in his heart after listening to this guy. This tone is really too embarrassing. It's really strange. According to what Yuzan said, you should have looked like this a few years ago. After a few years, you haven't changed at all. It's incredible. Seeing that Fisher didn't speak, Huang Yuan continued, speaking on the way, this guy even waved his hand, and the sailors brought by the commander left here and went to other places to destroy the enemy. Can you shut up? Your tone is very beating. Fisher finally couldn't help it and said with the corners of his eyes twitching, Pelusino. Chapter 70, Aggrieved Fisher, Funny Wooloxing. Boom, boom, boom. Two streamers of light, one blue and one yellow, were constantly entangled in the fiery red fire field. The blue and yellow staggered attacks blasted the ground into huge deep pits, and an extremely violent explosion erupted. The powerful impact moved mountains in all directions to the west he vented like a sea. Fisher and Huang Yuan have completely fought each other. There are only two of them left on this battlefield, no, five of them. However, Rather than a fight, it might be better to say that Fisher is avoiding the attack of the Yellow Ape as much as possible, and bombarding the Yellow Ape with thunder from time to time. No way, Fisher tried just now, Nian's attack can't hurt the Yellow Ape, all fissers who don't have arrogance and can catch the Yellow Ape's body can only rely on the speed of the thunder fruit to dodge. If Kizan or Yuzakarski come over, Fisher is really not afraid, even if he doesn't run away, he can harass the two with the ability of the thunder fruit. Unlike the Yellow Ape, the sparkling fruit is a luminous energy body. No grabbing his body can't attack him or affect him at all. Obviously, the energy type natural fruit, the thunder fruit cannot restrain the shining fruit. Those guys, haven't any of them left here yet? It's really useless. Xi secretly cursed while hiding behind Hancock and the three of them. The three of Hancock were surrounded by Fisher's use of Enhancer's mind energy, and the three of them already knew how to use domineering, so even if Fisher used the ability of the thunder fruit, the three of them did not receive too much damage, at most their bodies were a little swollen. Numb. After all, 
Fisher's main purpose of using the thunder fruit was not to attack the three of them. It's really lucky. I didn't expect you to not be domineering. This is a godsend opportunity. I have to keep you here completely. After dozens of times of entanglement, Huang Yuan naturally found out about Fisher's situation, and couldn't help but tilt his mouth and said wretchedly. However, although he said so on the surface, Huang Yuan was very fortunate in his heart. Fortunately, it was me who came this time. If Kizun and Sarkarsky came over, Fisher would definitely escape this time. The thunderous fruit is not only the most destructive fruit of the natural system, but also can compete with a sparkling fruit ability user in terms of speed. Moreover, judging from the situation just now, this fellow Fisher has obviously developed the thunder fruit to a very deep place. Its power is even stronger than his own attack, and its speed is not inferior to his own in the slightest. That's why he was able to cling to Fisher like this. However, despite this, he did not relax, staring at Fisher intently. When he came back from O'Hara a few years ago, Kizan said that although the person in front of him didn't know the reason, besides the thunder fruit, he had the space-type devil fruit ability. Huang Yuan didn't want to be like Kizan, being accidentally escaped by Fisher using his space ability. You've done a good job, Palus Lino. At this moment, a powerful whistling sound suddenly sounded in the ears of the two, and then a voice full of air came into the ears of the two of them. Immediately afterwards, a figure descended from the sky and landed directly between Fisher and the yellow ape, causing the ground to be filled with smoke. Oh, oh. I didn't expect Lord Wu Luxing to come too. After the smoke cleared, Huang Yuan showed surprise when he saw the person coming. However, Huang Yuan suddenly understood. After all, Fisher is a very respected guy in the Navy. It is no exception when it comes to world government. Fisher is not only O'Hara's man, but also the only person since the establishment of the world government to demonstrate two inseparable devil fruit abilities. The five old stars naturally also attach great importance to it and appearing here is no exception, although only one of them. The person who came was a sword-holding old man wearing a white tower strobe, glasses, and a bald head. He was one of the five old stars. At this time, the five old star stared at Fisher indifferently. Are you going to catch you without a fight, or will the old man take you down with his own hands? Looking at Fisher, the bald Wuloxing said indifferently, with a high-pitched tone, as if he didn't take Fisher at all. However, as soon as the words fell, a violent thunderbolt several meters thick fell from the sky and struck at the bald Wuloxing at a speed that was difficult for the naked eye to catch. However, none of the people present were vegetarians. Although the lightning speed was very fast, it was nothing to the bald Wuloxing. The samurai sword held in front of his chest was slightly unsheathed, and a swift and fierce sword energy shot up into the sky, directly cutting the thunder and lightning in half, bursting open, and a powerful force erupted instantly. Boom. It seems that you have chosen to resist stubbornly. The bald Wuloxing slowly let go of his arms around his chest drew out his samurai sword, and said indifferently. As soon as the knife was out of its sheath, a fierce and ferocious aura erupted from the bald Wuloxing's body, as if to split the sky in half. Zero dot 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 seeking flowers. The terrifying aura emptied the surrounding kilometers, and the raging fire was completely extinguished under this aura. It's really scary, Lord Wuloxing. Huang Yuan still had a yin and yang look, his tone was old-fashioned, and his ability to provoke war was max. As soon as these words came out, the bald Wuloxing, who was releasing his aura with all his strength, suddenly couldn't hold back his expression. When the corners of his eyes twitched slightly, the aura he had just released burst instantly. Hey, Paluslino, what do you guys want? Do you want to be hacked by the old man? The bald Wuloxing yelled directly at Huang Yuan. Fisher, the Hancock sisters. Brother Fisher, I feel so weird. This new old man seems funny. Seeing the scene in front of him, Hancock felt weird inside, and couldn't hide it, so he said it directly. Ah. It seems funny. Fisher also replied in a daze. Originally seeing this guy erupting with such a powerful aura, Fisher's expression was a bit dignified, but he didn't expect that the old man was handsome for only three seconds, and Huang Yuan broke the defense directly with a word. This is indeed a funny attribute. Dot. What did you say? Although the voices of Fisher and Hancock were low, they could hear the bald Wulok sing clearly. They turned their heads with gloomy faces and asked indifferently. Oh. It's nothing. You two continue to argue. I'll take them away first. See you next time. Fisher blinked after hearing this, and then said with a sincere expression. As soon as the words fell, the next moment, the figures of the four fissers instantly disappeared from the eyes of the bald Wuluxing and Huang Yuan, and there was no trace of them. A heat wave blew, and the scene froze instantly. Both the bald Wuluxing and Huang Yuan stared blankly at the empty front. Master Wuluxing, you let them go. After a long time, Huang Yuan spoke again in a strange way. What the hell? The butcher hacked you to death. If you hadn't distracted the old man's attention, would the old man have let them run away? Huang Yuan didn't say anything. But when he opened his mouth, the bald Wuloxing suddenly became furious, and the samurai sword in his hand turned black instantly, and the bald five with a dodge, Lao Xing slashed at the yellow ape. Hey, hey, five old star masters, I won't take this blame, 
I won't take it. 8. Chapter 71 Curler, looking for Rayleigh. Huh? It's actually a child, on a small boat. Fisher looked at the little girl who was startled by the sudden appearance of himself and others, and said in surprise, The three of Hancock are still in a daze at this time, obviously the three of them have not yet figured out the current situation, big brother benefactor. At this moment, the little girl who was frightened finally came to her senses and shouted in surprise, Thank you very much. Fisher smiled lightly, thanking you. When the slaves in the cell were released, Fisher imprinted space imprints on their bodies. As long as a person escaped from Mary Jaoa, Fisher could use these imprints to teleport down from above. This is what Fisher arranged just in case. I didn't expect it to be really useful. Huh? The little girl tilted her head suddenly, with question marks all over her face. Why do you feel that this little guy looks familiar? Fisher smiled slightly as he looked at this cute little girl who was 173 and always felt a little familiar. Immediately, Fisher shook off the idea. Putting down the three Hancocks who were still a little confused, Shell began to drive the boat. Although he has come down from the Red Earth continent. Fisher will not let it go. The top priority is to leave here as soon as possible, to escape from the pursuit of the Holy Land Marie Jaoa and the Navy that may come. The Enhancer Nianki was wrapped around the hull, and then the Thunderbolt fruit was used as a propulsion force to land on the stern, and a temporary small yacht was completed. Without any warning, the boat floating on the sea rushed out like an arrow from the string, and the panicked voices of four little girls came from a distance. D. Ding. Congratulations to the host for completing the sign-in task and gaining the mid-level arm domineering. After floating on the sea for two days, Fisher successfully brought the three of Hancock and the little girl who helped Fisher escape to the Chambord Islands. In the past two days, Fisher also knew the identity of the little girl who helped him. Curler, the future carder of the Revolutionary Army. That's the name of the little guy who helped Fisher escape from Mary Jaoa. To be honest, Fisher never expected that this guy would be captured as a slave at such a young age. However, Fortunately, this little guy has just been captured like Hancock, Fisher and the others. self abasement Brother Fisher, why did we come back here? Walking on the street of Chambord Islands, Hancock asked worriedly, looking around his surroundings. They were bought from here, and even if they come out now, there are still some shadows on the Chambord Islands. Come here to find someone who can take you back to Nine Snake Island. Fisher reached out and touched Hancock's little head, and said with a smile. Hearing this, the eyes of the three Hancock sisters suddenly lit up. Only the eyes of little Curla on the side were a little dim. She wanted to go back too, but her home was too far away, and she couldn't say that she wanted Fisher to send her back. A child's mind is simple, too far away to bother Fisher. Curla, I don't have much time. I can only let you go to Daughter Island with Hancock and the others first, and then let Hancock and the others find a way to send you back to your hometown. Notice the look in Curla's eyes dim. Fisher moved his hands from Hancock's head to hers, softly comforting. Well. Thank you brother Fisher. Although it was just a reassurance, it made Curla very excited, with a bright smile on her face. Don't worry, Kara, I will find a way to send you back to your hometown when the time comes. Hancock also promised quickly. He is also a fallen person in the world, but Hancock still has a good impression of Kara, and regards Kara as his younger sister. Thank you, Sister Hancock. Curla thanked obediently. Let's go. Under the leadership of Fisher, several people came to the 13th area. The person Fisher wants to find is Granny New from Daughters Island. Gulo Lyosa. Only this guy can send the three of Hancock back. And the only one who knows where this guy is is Hades Rayleigh. And Raleigh, the king of the underworld, came to the Chambord Islands not long after the disbandment of the Roger Pirates, and defected to Zenki who opened a rip-off bar here. This guy Lee couldn't sit still, if he wanted to find him, he had to ask Xiaqi to inquire. Welcome. After successfully finding Xiaqi's maverick rip-off bar, Fisher led Hancock and the others into it. At this time, there was no business in the ripped-off bar, it was very deserted. There was only one table in the bar with guests, two men were drinking and chatting there, and the owner of the bar, Xiaqi, was smoking a cigarette and wiping his glass at the bar. The arrival of Fisher and the others didn't surprise Xiaqi, she just glanced at it and didn't care, and continued to wipe the wine glass. Even if the bar she opened was full of little kids, she wouldn't think there was anything wrong. However, as the owner here, Chong Kai still habitually greeted her. However, as soon as Fisher opened his mouth, Xiaqi showed surprise. Xiaqi, is Lee there? Who are you? Xiaqi was a little surprised, but then asked with a smile on her face. I want to ask Rayleigh for help. Fisher didn't answer, but went straight to the point and stated his purpose. Looking for that guy? That guy probably went to gamble, I'm not sure. Xiaqi took a puff of cigarette and said lightly. Then I'll wait for him here. Hearing this, Fisher was not surprised, and said lightly, and then took Hancock and the others to find a table and sit down. Fisher is not very familiar with the Chambord Islands, nor does he know where the casinos are. It is really unique to be able to find Xiaqi's rip-off bar. Such a big place and such a bar, Fisher is not blind. In comparison, the other buildings of Chambord's, Fisher, are fascinating. The three of you are dressed like female warriors from Nine Snake Island. At this time, 
Xie Chi noticed the three of Hancock and said suddenly, Hancock and the others are still dressed as female fighters from Hydra Island and have not changed, eh? Sister, do you know us? Hancock said hurriedly. 2.0 was a little surprised when he heard this. Sister, you can really talk. I just know a friend who came out of Nine Snakes Island, and she was dressed like this at the time. Hearing Hancock's words, Xie Chi looked very happy, and answered Hancock's words with a smile. Do you know Guru Lyosa? I just happened to be looking for her and asked her to take Hancock and the three back. Hearing what Xie Chi said, Fisher was not surprised, and then said, Hey, is that so? Okay, I'll ask her to come over. Xie Chi was very surprised, but she didn't feel surprised, and then she didn't refuse, and directly agreed. Thank you, Sister Xie Chi. Hearing this, Hancock burst into tears of joy, bowed again and again, and thanked Xie Chi. Xie Chi, I'm back. At this moment, there was a loud and energetic shout from outside. Pluto Rayleigh. Chapter 72 Please, invite to fight. Before anyone arrived, the loud voice had already echoed in the bar. Sharky, listen to me, that guy who showed up in Ahara a few years ago was just amazing. He ran to Mary Jaoa and made a big fuss, and retreated calmly in the hands of Wu Luxing and Palus Lino. As soon as the words were finished, a slovenly old man with blonde hair and a pair of round glasses walked in, holding a wanted warrant in his hand which clearly stated that Fisher was carrying the three Hancock sisters the appearance is displayed. Fisher, Hancock et al., hash, Hades Rayleigh. Obviously, Pluto Rayleigh also noticed the existence of Fisher and others for the first time, and was speechless for a while. Brother Fisher, Curler came to Fisher's side, and grabbed the corner of Fisher's clothes in fear. Hey, I didn't expect that this time the Navy learned how to be good and took pictures of my appearance, and I made progress. Fisher looked at the wanted warrant in Rayleigh's hand, touched his chin, and gave the Navy affirmation. Oh nine, ha ha ha, I didn't expect you to be so funny, kid. Seeing Fisher's reaction, Rayleigh was slightly taken aback, and then burst out laughing. Both of you, hurry up and leave. The bar closes early today, so you won't be charged for your drinks. Get lost. Xia Chi at the bar also came back to her senses at this time, facing the two drunken men in the bar. The ordinary youth scolded when the two of them heard the words. They also reacted, and left directly. The fear in Fisher's eyes when he left made Fisher a little helpless. Am I that scary? I think that although I am young, I am already a handsome young man. Fisher rubbed his chin, a little depressed. It's weird not to be afraid of you. Xie Chi at the bar smiled lightly. Fisher was the one who attacked Marie Jaiwa. In the eyes of ordinary people, he was a vicious person, so how could he not be afraid? Xie Chi, bring me a bottle of rum. Lee shouted at Xie Chi, then walked towards Fisher, and sat down opposite to Fisher familiarly. Boy, you really admire me. You are the first to attack Mary Jaiwa. As soon as he sat down, Lee said loudly, his eyes did not conceal his approval for Fisher, obviously he had a good sense of Fisher, I was taken in as a slave, how could I get out if I didn't do this, Fisher was also a little helpless, if he could, he really didn't want to do it, after all, quietly entering the red earth continent, and then quietly bringing the three of Hancock out, wouldn't it be good, thinking of this, the corners of Fisher's mouth twitched involuntarily, that's right, it's fine if I quietly bring the three of Hancock out, there's no danger at all like that. Why are you making such a fuss about Marie Jaiwa? Thinking of this, Shell slapped her face with a slap. Mardan, I was preconceived about the case of Tiger's Bastard, and I didn't think of it at all. Um, what's wrong with you kid? Seeing that Fisher slapped him in the face suddenly, Lee was also frightened, with a strange expression on his face. No, it's nothing, Fisher said lightly with erratic eyes. This kind of scandal must never be known to others, let others misunderstand it. Really the Pluto. Let me introduce myself. My name is Fisher Zoldyak, and I'm a killer. Fisher took a deep breath, and then said seriously. Silbase Rawley, please give me your advice. Seeing Fisher's formal self-introduction, Rawley also pushed his glasses, and then introduced himself. Here, you're um, you guys, this is juice for you. As soon as Lily finished introducing, Xia Chi brought over the rum, and brought a few glasses of juice to Fisher and others by the way. Thank you. Fisher took a look at Xia Chi and thanked her and Hancock and the others followed suit obediently. Speaking of which, why are you looking for Rayleigh? Xia Chi nodded, then pulled a chair over, sat down, put one hand on her left cheek, and asked with interest. I came here to find Rayleigh because I want to ask Rayleigh to contact Gulo Lyosa and ask her to come and pick Hancock and the others back to Nine Snake Island. Fisher nodded and explained. It's indeed the dress of Nine Snake Island, okay, I'll contact her now. Hearing this, Rayleigh glanced at Hancock and the three of them and then directly agreed without hesitation at all. It's so simple to agree to help, Fisher asked unexpectedly. Ha ha, I have some friendship with that guy. The people of Nine Snake Island are living outside, so naturally they can't just ignore it. Besides, contacting that guy can also make him owe me a favor, which is not bad for me. Rawley laughed boldly, and then explained. Is that so? That's not a bad thing. Rayleigh nodded, then took out a phone bug from his clothes, and began to dial the phone. Soon, Balu Balu's voice came out from the phone bug 
and then the phone bug changed 520, from expressionless to a somewhat old look. Rayleigh, what do you want from me? As soon as the call was connected, before Li Ali could speak, the other person asked directly. Guliwali Oza, I have three little soldiers living outside of Nine Snake Island, please come here. Li said directly without procrastinating. What did you say? The phone bug's appearance changed drastically, and he exclaimed. You wait, I'll be right over. After the hasty voice sounded. The phone bug hung up directly. Okay, it's done. Riley put the phone bug into his clothes and said with a smile. Thank you, uncle. The three of Hancock thanked quickly. No, I'm fine. Boy, tell me now, what on earth are you thinking about attacking that place? You know, that place is very dangerous. Lee waved his hands again and again, and then asked Fisher with interest. As for what Fisher said before for the matter of being arrested, he was the king of Hades, and no ghost would believe it. Fisher, you fight with me, and I'll tell you. Hey, is that so? All right. I just want to see your strength too. Hearing this, Lee was slightly taken aback, and after a long thought, he agreed. Chapter 73, The Resentment of Natural Teeth. The Entangled Collision of Domineering Colors. I'm a swordsman, so the weapon is a sword, and you, on the open grass, Rayleigh said to Fisher with a sword. Swordmaster? Fisher was a little stunned. Speaking of which, his kendo is very good, but he rarely uses it, and he doesn't even have a saber. Before, he only used swordsmanship when he was sparring with his father Silver. Huh? No. I seem to have a sword, natural teeth, blades that don't kill, just right for sparring, and you don't have to worry about hurting people. Fisher whispered to himself, his eyes suddenly lit up, with a thought, the natural teeth that Fisher had kept in the system space appeared in Fisher's hands. As soon as the natural teeth appeared, they kept trembling, almost flew out of Fisher's hands. Fisher clearly felt a hazy idea from the natural tooth, which was the resentment of the natural tooth. In an instant, Shell understood what this resentment was. Tan Xingye was complaining that Fisher left it in the dark system space without any light, so that it could not see the light of day. I'm sorry, I won't do it in the future. Fisher smiled slightly, and then apologized earnestly, before, because he didn't know if he had a heart of compassion, whether he could use the resurrection power of Tan Xingfeng, and because he didn't have any idea about practicing Ming Dao Wan Yupo, so Fisher put Tan Xingfeng in the system space, and has never been able to use it. Take it out. Unexpectedly, the hazy thoughts on the natural teeth would have such a reaction. Hearing Fisher's apology, natural teeth stopped. Immediately, another piece of information entered Fisher's mind along the natural teeth. Upon receiving this message, Fisher's eyes lit up. In the world of Inuyasha, after Seshomaru obtained the approval of Dam Xingyu, Tadaozi appeared to take it away and rebuild it, inspiring the power of the underworld. However, the natural teeth obtained by Fisher do not need to be recast, as long as they can stimulate the power of the underworld of the natural teeth they can be cultivated. And just now, the information that Dan Xingye gave Fisher was the power of the underworld and the cultivation method of the dying moon of the underworld. In other words, Fisher can now develop the power of the underworld that belongs to the natural teeth. Don't worry, I will develop it well, Fisher said gently, stroking the natural teeth. His natural teeth trembled slightly, as a response to Fisher. After communicating with Dan Xingye, Fisher shifted his gaze to Rayleigh, sorry for keeping you waiting. No, no. There wasn't a long wait. It's better to say that it's my good fortune to see such a spiritual weapon. Lee shook his head again and again, with envy on his face. He could clearly see the communication between Tan Xingye and Fisher just now. He had only heard of this kind of spiritual weapon for decades, but had never encountered it. I didn't expect to meet in the hands of Fisher today. He <laughs> he. Then, it's time to start, Rayleigh. Fisher didn't say much after hearing this, and gestured to Rayleigh with a gesture of invitation. It's better for you to make the first move. I'm an old guy who makes the first move. I always feel like I'm bullying you. Lee shook his head. That's right. Then I'll make the first move. Fisher didn't show any pretense when he heard that. He just raised his natural teeth. And then, a huge light blue slash struck Lee from the ground like a thunderbolt. In the blink of an eye, Fisher's slash had already arrived in front of Lee. So fast, Lee's pupils shrank, and he swung his slash without hesitation. Boom. The violent airwaves vented in all directions turning into a storm and sweeping around. The next moment, Rayleigh's figure rushed out of the smoke and galloped towards Fisher. The Navy's wanted notice said that you are a person with the ability of the Thunder Fruit, but I didn't expect your swordsmanship to be so terrifying. You are already a great swordsman with that kind of slashing. The lens in his eyes flashed white, and Lee's figure appeared in front of Fisher, and he slashed with a long sword in his hand. Fisher also brandished his natural teeth and quickly slashed over. Exclamation mark. Metal and iron clash, swords and swords blare together. A series of terrifying collision sounds continued to spread, and the collision of powerful forces turned into a circular impact, constantly destroying everything within a radius of 100 meters. Even Hancock and the others who were 100 meters away were affected. If Xiechi hadn't stood in the way for a thousand years, they would have been blown away. Rayleigh, use the domineering color to wrap around. During the battle, Shell shouted at Rayleigh. When Lee heard this, his eyes flashed, and he wanted to refuse immediately. 
the two of them are now fighting with domineering and kendo strength. The commotion caused by this has been very large. It has already attracted a lot of people, and in some places hundreds of meters away, or even thousands of meters away, there are already navy and pirates staring at this place. If you continue to use the Overlord color to entangle the battle, it will definitely cause a bigger sensation. However, Rayleigh didn't use it. But Fisher forced him to use Overlord Color Coil. A layer of red light suddenly appeared on Fisher's originally black hands and natural teeth. As soon as this light came out, the power of Fisher's attack was suddenly shocked, and Lee was directly sent flying. Lee's whole body floated on the ground, and he stopped after several times in a row. The longsword was inserted into the ground to forcefully stop his body that was flying upside down. Overlord Color Winding? No, that's not right. It's another kind of calendar that is different from Shiki. The two powers are mixed together and the power increases dramatically. Lee's eyes were full of surprise, and he stared blankly at the black and red natural teeth in Fisher's hand. The next moment, the astonishment in Lee's eyes, Nero Dihau, changed, and turned into excitement and surprise. Lee stood up slowly, and the black long sword in his hand was also slowly wrapped with black and red rays of light. Since you want to experience the Overlord's entanglement, then come, Lee said with excitement, and Lee's figure turned into a flying arrow, stepping on the sonic's boom cloud and bursting out. When Fisher saw this, a trace of excitement flashed in his eyes, and then his figure disappeared in a flash, and he rushed out. Before the two terrifying forces collided, the surrounding air began to distort. Not good. At this moment, the expressions of the observers on Xiaqi's side and other places changed drastically. Xiaqi turned around quickly, embraced the four cubs with both hands, and then disappeared instantly as an afterimage. And less than a second after Xiaqi disappeared, a devastating force soared into the sky and swept everything! Exclamation mark dot. Chapter 74 Enhancer is domineering, the Admiral is dispatched. Lying on a piece of ruined land that looked like it had been washed away by a nuclear bomb, Raleigh's joy was on the surface, and he laughed loudly. Ha 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 ha, it's really fun, I haven't had such a good fight in years. Boy, the entanglement you had just now is definitely not domineering, it's the fusion of another kind of power different from domineering. After laughing, Lee turned his head to look at Fisher who was lying on the ground like himself, asked aloud. Ah, it's two different forces, a thing called mind. Fisher didn't mean to hide anything, and simply explained to Rawley. The power used by Fisher just now is different from the Overlord color entanglement. Fisher fused the mid-level arm domineering color he had just obtained two days ago with his enhancing. The power of the fusion of the two is terrifying, and it is even tied with Lee's Overlord color entanglement. No. Maybe it's also possible that Rawley let the water go. But it was also very scary. The collision of Lili's domineering twine and his enhancer's domineering force directly blows away everything within a kilometer radius. Grass grows within a kilometer radius. No, the ground of the Chambord Islands is rather peculiar, and it cannot be said that way. However, the place where Rayleigh and Fisher were located was directly lifted several meters above the surface, and the water level was lowered. It can be said that 077 has become a deep pit, ah, uh, a small basin. It's unbelievable. It seems that I'm really old. Hearing Fisher's confession, Rawley was deeply moved. He used eight layers of power just now, and he was still entwined with the Overlord color, but he was even able to tie with Fisher's fusion domineering. You know, Shell didn't even use the ability of the Thunder Fruit. This made Rawley lament the fact that he was old. Are you worthy of being called old? It's probably not a problem for you to take away an admiral. Hearing Rawley's emotion, Fisher twitched his eyes and said unceremoniously, This old guy is somewhat suspicious of Vesai in terms of his strength. Is he still old? Who can be said to be old when he has reached this age and still has this kind of strength? Ha ha, I'll take it as you are praising me. Rawley laughed again when he heard this. However, after laughing, Rayleigh's expression became serious. Okay, let's get out of here quickly. All ghosts and monsters will appear here later. The old man still wants to continue to live in seclusion here. Standing up from the ground, Rawley patted the wetness on his back and said to Fisher. Aj, ah, let's go. Fisher also stood up, twisted his uncomfortable back and replied, the ground of the Chambord Islands cannot lie on the ground at will, it is all water. The two left here shoulder to shoulder. Well, it was Rayleigh who hooked his shoulders, and Fisher looked disgusted. What the two of them didn't know was that not long after they left, a figure appeared at the place where the two were fighting. A marine in a rear admiral's attire stared in shock at the utterly devastated terrain. Immediately, he took out a phone bug from his clothes and quickly dialed the number. The phone bug was connected, and the general saw the situation and reported it. This is Iwas, Major General of the Chambord Islands. Just now, the Chambord Islands discovered the figure of Fisher, who is capable of thundering fruit, and Pluto Rayleigh. The two clashed in the Chambord Islands, destroying a large area, and now both of them have disappeared. Please report to Marshal Kong immediately. Even though Rawley has retired for several years, there is still a navy that recognizes Rawley's identity. In other words, after more than ten years, only the Admiral of the Navy Headquarters and the Elite Lieutenant General can recognize Rawley at a glance. As soon as Fisher's arrest warrant came out, 
the rear admiral who had just met would naturally recognize him. Hey, contact Marshal Sora now, soon. There was a roar in the Marshal's office of Marin Fando in the Navy headquarters. What did you say? How did those two guys get together? Hateful. Hey, Carp, don't eat it. Go and catch that Thunder Boy, and bring Lee back by the way. Kong yelled in the Marshal's office, and their nets stand by to the side without doing anything Garp roared. This guy Fisher reappeared in the Navy's sight just after attacking Marie Jaoa, which he couldn't bear. No, that kid is quite to my liking. I won't beat him. If you want me to say, those guys in the Holy Land deserve it. Such a strong man dares to catch him randomly. If it were me, I would have to kill a few pigs. Garp refused without thinking, and sarcastically. You bastard, do you still know your identity? You are an elite lieutenant general of the Navy headquarters. Hearing Garp's words, the air was filled with smoke. Let Sang Garp go, I won't go anyway. Garp gave him a disdainful look, and then quickly slipped away with a pack of sent by. Damn brat. Looking at Garp's attitude, he twitched his face and yelled loudly but Karp had slipped out of the office and couldn't hear him at all. After calming down his anger fiercely, Kong picked up the phone bug on the table and dialed the number of Zango. Hello, Sengoku. Go to the Chambord Islands and bring that fisher back to me, if possible. Rayleigh will also be caught. As soon as the phone was connected, Kong ordered to the other side. I see, Marshal Kong. Compared with Garp's fishing, Zango was very conscientious, and he directly agreed, which made Kong feel a lot better. Soon, an Admiral-class warship slowly sailed out of Marin Vanda, heading towards the Chambord Islands. On the other side, in Xiazu's ripoff bar, Fisher and Lee have already returned here. Naturally, the two of them would not choose a place close to the bar, so the place was safe and sound. Hey, Gulolioza, you're here. As soon as he returned to the bar, Lee Lee noticed a small figure beside Hancock and the others, and immediately waved his hand to say hello. Rayleigh, long time no see. Gulolioza nodded to Rayleigh as a greeting, and then shifted her gaze to Fisher who came back together. You are the benefactor who saved Hancock and the others. I am here to thank you. This is my phone number. If you have any requests in the future, you can ask me. As long as it can be done by Ju Snake Island, I will do my best. Gulorioza took out a phone bug and handed it to Fisher, thanking him solemnly. Fisher glanced at the phone bug in his hand, reached out to take it, and threw it directly into the system space. Then I won't be polite. Hancock and the others. You should take them back to Nine Snake Island as soon as possible. It's not safe to stay here. Fisher nodded and said to Gulorioza. He and Rayleigh made such a big commotion, which would naturally be noticed by the Navy stationed in the Chambord Islands. In other words, the Navy headquarters will not turn a blind eye. It is estimated that there will be strong naval forces coming. Chambord is going to be a place of right and wrong. I know. Gulorioza also heard about the fight between Fisher and Lili from Xiechi, and knew what might happen next, so she quickly agreed. Chapter 75 Instructing saying goodbye, Xiechi's molestation. Brother Fisher, come with us to Nine Snake Island. Hearing the conversation of Fisher and others, Hancock couldn't help but said, No, only women can go to Nine Snake Island, and I couldn't be with you in the past. Go back and practice hard, and we should be able to meet again then. Perhaps, if you become stronger, you can change the status quo of Nine Snake Island, and maybe I can stay on Nine Snake Island then. Fisher reached out and stroked Hancock's head, soothing him gently. Yes. Brother Fisher, I will definitely become stronger. At that time, I will change the rule that men are not allowed to go to the Island of Nine Snakes, so that Brother Fisher can enter Nine Snake Island. Hancock immediately promised. Yes, yes, my Hancock is awesome. Fisher comforted like a child. Hancock's cheeks were reddish, and his whole body became awkward. After leaving the Holy Land of Marie Jaoa, Fisher discovered that Hancock is very dependent on him, almost never wanting to leave his side. After coming to the Chambord Islands, he never left. What's going on? Fisher feels that Hancock's character has developed in the direction of being sick and delicate. Not only Hancock, but also Sanderson Ear and Marigold. For the dependence of the three, Fisher feels pretty good. This is the first time Fisher has encountered this kind of thing. I didn't experience it when I was in the Zoldik family. My mother doesn't count, and my mother is an elder. It was also the same when I was in Ahara before. Although Robin was also very dependent on himself, Robin was very sensible and would not keep pestering himself like the three of Hancock, but he did not develop in this direction. There is a big difference between the two. Ah, uh, speaking of it, Sanderson Ear and Marigold seemed to want to gain great power, so they went to eat those sumo hot pots, which made their figures look out of shape. Thinking of this, Fisher suddenly looked around. They all regarded the three of them as her own younger sisters, and she didn't want the two younger sisters to turn into such a miserable look, so she couldn't help but said with a serious expression, Sanderson Ear, Marigold, you two are not allowed to eat sumo hot pot, do you know? Oh, oh, I see. Brother Fisher. Although the two didn't know why Fisher said that, they still nodded obediently and recorded Fisher's words in their hearts. Well, good boy. Seeing that the two had really recorded their words in their hearts, Fisher nodded in satisfaction. Okay, let's stop here for your farewell, you must leave quickly. At this time, Gilly Oza said without disturbing the three people to say goodbye. Well, 
I see. However, before I leave, I want to give Hancock and the others a few things. You don't mind seeing Rayleigh, Gyuro Rioza and the others driving a small fishing boat and escorting the three of Hancock to leave the Chambord Islands and head for the windless island of Nine Snakes. Fisher couldn't help feeling that Rayleigh is so brave. Just a small fishing boat dares to venture into the windless belt. However, thinking about the fact that this guy swam directly from Chambord Islands to Hydra Island in the original book, Fisher was relieved. There's no comparison between the two at all. It is obviously impossible for the four of Hancock to return to Nine Snakes safely if there is only Gulorioso alone, so Gulorioso asked Lee to escort them together. Lee also readily agreed, and changed it is now the case. Hey, what are you going to do next? There's such a big commotion, and you're still in the limelight. The Admiral of the Navy Headquarters should already be on the way here. Xia Chi, who was beside Fisher, was smoking a lady's cigarette, asked curiously. You've been smoking since I met you, is this okay? Fisher didn't answer but looked at the lady's cigarette in his mouth with a strange expression. When he first came to the bar, Xiaxian was smoking a cigarette and cleaning his glass. Later, after discussing with Rayleigh and returning to the bar, Xiaqi was still smoking, and she had never heard of it until now, one after another. Zero dot 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 seeking flowers. Aren't you afraid of bad breath? Fisher asked curiously. For this, Fisher is really curious. For two lifetimes, Fisher has never smoked, but he has seen others smoke. When those heavy smokers talk one after another, there is some second-hand smoke in their mouths from time to time. Fisher really wants to know, can Xiaqi, a woman, bear this smell? Halitosis? I don't. If you don't believe me, smell it. When Fisher said this, Xiaqi was also slightly taken aback, and then said with a smile, after finishing speaking, she leaned over and blew on Fisher. Dot 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 zero. However, Fisher dodged directly. He doesn't want to inhale second-hand smoke. Ha ha, brat. Don't say such things to a woman in the future. Seeing Fisher retreating more than ten meters like a rabbit, Xiaqi suddenly smiled triumphantly. Then, come and sit in the bar when you have time. Immediately, Xiaqi turned and left, waving her hands as she walked. Oh, woman. Fisher raised his eyelids and said calmly. Immediately, Fisher also left here. Just like Xiaqi said, the Admiral of the Navy Headquarters should have come here. When he came to One Piece World to complete the sign-in task, Fisher had already made a decision to fight with the strong here to improve his favor. Fisher is now at the tipping point of an upgrade, and now he's just short of an upgrade. To put it bluntly, something much like Albert has accomplished many incredible things. It is also possible to defeat or draw some strong players. Between the two, Fisher chose the latter to challenge the powerful. Now that the Admiral of the Navy may come over, Fisher will naturally not hide. However, before that, it is necessary to arrange some backhands to leave, which is death. If you like this audiobook, subscribe the channel for more videos like this. And join my Patreon if you want to support me. Link in the description. Leave some comment and let me know if you guys like this story, or you have a web novel you like and want to hear its audiobook. I will be happy to create them for you. Please like, share, and leave a comment on the video.